Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Final case. Day two. How are you all doing? Can you hear me okay? I've had some sleep. I crashed and burned last night, and I will probably crash and burn after tonight as well. Uh, cause second long boy stream in a row. We're gonna try and see if we can finish the case tonight. You're set for the day though. I just had a dinner there. I'm fueled. Slept, and I'm just ready to like crash. <laughs> If I'm a little tired, I do apologize. My sleep schedule is a little off this week. I'm having a bit of trouble sleeping. I blame the Game Awards. Jeff Keighley, what's wrong with you? Why do you schedule this thing so late at night? Like, Europeans exist. <laughs> what you gonna do? You still think it's the Yakuza? It is the Yakuza. It is the Mafia. Oh, I... When I uncover this, like, underground mafia gambling ring that's putting out these hits on people and trying to profit off people in the Grand Prix, like... I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I'm just trying to prove it. Like, any good scientist, you have a confirmation bias towards what you want, and then you just put the evidence together to show what you want. That's how it works. <laughs> oh god, but you're all very welcome to today's stream. It's always so dramatic when the stream is starting because of like the main menu music. It really gets you pumped to solve anime crime. Uh, but let's go over some ground rules before we dive into today's stream. Uh, as ever, uh, blind playthrough of Phoenix Wright, I've not been spoiled. Please no spoilers in chat. Uh, all questions I ask are rhetorical, unless I say the key phrase, help me chat. If I do not say that, do not answer my questions, okay? Important. Uh, the no backseating command is set up, you can have it at any point in time. There's also a content warming on the stream, uh, that we're just gonna keep about from yesterday. Uh, this case in particular seems to deal with suicide. And there's some quite upsetting imagery that I'm honestly surprised is in the game. Uh, I don't think it's actually needed in the game. It, 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 it just seems like... Very... I, I, I don't know how to describe it. It, it, it doesn't need to be there, though. Um, but it is. So there's a content warning. Um, if you do find it upsetting, by all means, bow out. That's understandable. I don't fault you. Case going hard. Evidently. Yeah. It is just quite shocking, and, uh, like, some of the subjects and the way to handle it, like, I know Edgeworth was going for tough love with it yesterday, but Jesus Christ, Edgeworth, at the same time. Uh, I think that's everything that needs to be said, though. Uh, and we're gonna, we're, yeah, it's a long boy stream today. Uh, I actually have a video that goes live at 6, too, so I'm gonna take a quick old break then, just to... Plug the old socials for that one, if that's okay. Um, that's everything. There's a quite. There's actually a little bit of the video that I will show when it releases, <laughs> and I'm not sure if I should have included it. Um, but it's funny, and uh, we'll 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 jump to that later. That's at six o'clock. So someone will give me a reminder for that when that's up. And we'll do uh, some socials, and I will show you the little bit. <laughs> do a recap. Um, so, the Mafia... <laughs> the Mafia has kidnapped Maya. And there is a paid assassin called The Killer, who is at large. German surname, we believe. I don't know why. It's literally the killer. Um, and we're trying to track him down. Uh, there's a mafia gambling ring, though, who paid for the assass assassination plan. And Mash is the prime suspect, and Edgeworth believes that Mash like, put out the hit on Juan. But, Juan, but if Matt put out the hit, 
that's because the Mafia were betting money on him, and he owes money to the Mafia for these previous assassination attempts. So he's trying to recuperate some of that debt by winning. So he needs Juan out of the picture. Uh, but Juan also possibly had a hit out, or placed some money on Matt. And the killer needs Matt to be innocent, because if Matt's found guilty, then the Mafia loses the gambling money. I think. That's the recap. Also, Pearl is still with us for some reason, and she really shouldn't be. I think that's everything. And with that, we should be set. We fully up to date. Let's go. Barrow on my turnabout part 3 1 investigation. Let's go. So, this is the killer. Yeah, so we actually know who it is. Um. Because we've seen him in the cutscenes where he's just kidnapped Maya. But Phoenix doesn't know this yet, so we gotta be very careful. Uh, he has like stitching all the way down his face, which I'm wondering what's like kinda uh, happens there. Nasty cut. Sometimes you're just chopping onions and it goes quite badly. Talk to him. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ungard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. How typically butler-like as it were. This guy is, like, the assassin. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say, maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not uh, appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. I would have thought Mr. Ingar the kind to have a maid over a butler. But I don't... Okay, I don't understand that. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. There's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. Please excuse this door and the frantic banging you can hear of a small spirit medium that's been kidnapped. It's just another one of Matt's cats that really needs to be fed right now. People are not always who they appear to be. Oh, here's Shu. There he goes. Uh, so long, Harvey Dent. Uh... Is there anything we can examine here? Oh, there's a giant cooking heart here. It's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a heart before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor, then. I'll show you one when you do. Gotta inspect the bike. That seems so dangerous. <laughs> Giant bicycle is flying through the air. That bicycle, Pearls, is one of where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Really? Wow. Sorry to disappoint you. It can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. I guess Steven Spielberg lied to me. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Oh, what is it with me and feeling inferior today? Poor Phoenix. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The ones next to that are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo-Old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. Maya. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I know more about that show than a kid. There's a small door at the bottom of this, this bigger door, Mr. Nick. That's for Mr. Engard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe. The door. It's locked tight. Uh, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. 
and hear this faint crying out from behind it. Saying, like, it's just someone screaming Phoenix for some reason. Probably just the wind. I'm amazed we can't investigate that more. Oh god, old bag. Do you know anything about this? Well, I can investigate the crime scene with this. Have you ever show this letter I got from Edgeworth? Miss Oldbag, if you would look at it. What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Edgy poo. So, canonically, once again, Oldbag's voice is the Ricky Rat voice. I can't do the Ricky Rat voice long enough, so I'm just establishing that voice, and then we'll go back to, like, a softer voice. But in your head, that's what she sounds like, okay? Is that a perfume? For Rome d'Amora smell. Shutter? What? Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? That old man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. If you do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. Well, we get to go inside now. Looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's good going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Uh, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. I like what's the ray gun speaking. What? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Angard's room today. Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? Wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. Once again, I wonder who did it. Well, no, we know who did it. They're not hiding that, at least. <laughs> it's just... Like, just imagine that's your family surname you become an assassin. Like, you'll never hear it down. I guess weirder things have happened. We literally have Bowser running Nintendo these days. But still, it is quite funny. Don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Oldbag. Okay. Uh, well, we can go to the hall. There's nothing really in the living room to investigate right now. Looks like we're the only ones here. Yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. They have a lot of food that they've just left out. <laughs> I want to eat a meal with Mystic Maya again. Yeah, me too. Whenever I watch Mystic Maya eat like she does, it makes me happy about eating. And then I can eat a lot. Well then, how about after we wrap up this case, we all go out for a huge 20-course feast? That's how people die, Phoenix. Okay, let's work really hard then. Sure is one luxurious hotel. Almost to the point of gaudy with how it blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? What did the bellboy give me again? It wasn't- was it the Gatewater Hotel again then? I thought it was a different hotel. I haven't cleaned up all the food yet. There's a sad feeling hanging in the air now that the party is over. It's the same hotel, okay. That is such a beautiful sight. The chandelier. Yes, but I can't believe it. I can't believe that such a terrible murder happened under such beautiful lights. It's shocking. Uh, grand set of doors over here. The doors Maya followed the bellboy out of only to disappear. If only we had all gone together. The awards ceremony was held on stage. Really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. I wonder if everyone is alright. I hope not, Pearl. I hope they're suffering, and they're miserable, and that nothing's gone right for any of them. I heard the very big circus just recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they're all fine, girls. But I hope they aren't.
Okay, gay water hotel hi hallway. Hey, city boy! Lada, he is still here. Wrecking course! Investigative. Investigative. Oh, that word's a doozy! Investigative photographer eats her stabs on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel here just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. But do you have a camera? Wreck given! A photographer's gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? Well, I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding them out, do you have mine, you bread teeth? <laughs> oh, I gotta give her back her camera, yeah. Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Can I just hand her a camera? No, she doesn't want her camera. She wants a hand towel for some reason. Okay. She's in a weird mood today. I tried. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You reckon you're gonna shell out the box for the info I got? Lottie, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs. Shook a few hands. Had a soda pop with a few of them, too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time, either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that ditty I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about Engard shoving his manager lady onto Corita? Yeah. Ah, uh, well I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I sorta wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Paparazzi. Journalistic integrity, Lottie, have you heard of it? Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bulldooters. The word I want to say is bullshit here. Well, that might have raised the game's age rate. <laughs> hey, what's with you? Why are you staring at me like a gr my grandpa used to? Like the suicide. Yeah, it seems like a weird point to draw the line where it's like, we can't have her say a swear. Here is someone hanging. Like, <laughs> game. Like, what's going on there? That's a very valid point. Yeah. <laughs> hey, why are you, do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um, the camera. Ah, my baby, my $1,600 baby. What's with that red coat of prosecutor anyhow? God told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're that red coat's friend, ain't you? Put in a few good words for me and get me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours and I guarantee you'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to, to get going. Tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Get yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Oh, see you, Lotta. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? I know you're eight and you shouldn't be investigating a murder scene like this. Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, yeah? Okay. And when you finish Scooby Doo, if you can theorize some possible murder suspects and weapons, that would be fantastic. Okay. <laughs> make sure to repress some of these memories now so there's no long term psychological consequences on you, Pearls. Okay. Okay, that's out in there. Oh, oh, what? What is this? Oh, 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 oh. 
Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly, ghastly moaning? Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. I hate evil ghosts! Wow! I don't think it's a ghost, maybe it's a demon. What? Why were you making those noises? Who you calling a demon, brat? Ah! Zoinks! It's the alien! What's with the references in this case? They seem so random. <laughs> like, we're just like pulling from everything today. Who you calling an alien? Oh, you're shooting where are you gonna go? Oh, it's just you, Ms. Olbach. What are you doing here? What is, what is wrong with youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan, and you were disturbing me. Okay, is there anything new at the scene? The clue's here. So, the Nickel Samurai's costume wasn't here. Yeah. Can't believe Mr. Corita went so far just to say bad things about Mr. Ingard. Well, it was a press conference, so he had to go in costume. Weren't Mr. Ingard and Mr. Corita friends? They weren't friends. They couldn't be friends because they were rivals. So a rival is someone who's a strong enemy. Rose is really fired up over this, and I don't have an answer for her. There's the glass. Beautiful wine glass, and there's toma tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. The bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. Probably Mr. Karita fought his assailant. These glass shards. Probably from the glass vase Miss Andrews knocked over. That's a bed. Oh, she's never seen a bed, yeah. Okay. Looks like Mr. Karita had dinner that night. This bottle, it's tomato juice. There's a lot of food at the award show that night. But I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after only eating a Miyagra meal like this. Some of these lines are the same. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out, like, is there anything new? Uh... All the bears. You in the bin. No! <laughs> no! I want to leave it behind. Okay, we've had most of this dialogue before. Suitcase. Packing too much. Playing with a watches. The fridge. Power juice and tomato juice are empty. I like his vegetables. Okay, uh, so I don't think there's anything new to investigate. That teddy bear looks really sad in the back. Bless him. Um, night of the murder. Please talk to me about the night of the murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of a photographer in her note. She was loitering around with that imbil imbecilic look on her face. That imb imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> but you know, I was, I was working at night too, doing my job, minding my own business. It's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Karita. He was the most popular star, you know. Especially where it counts in my book. But I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. Ingard. Oh, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big. Certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick. Mm, what is the pearls? The presents. They're all bears, right? Got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Why bears? 
All Mr. Kurita's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know. When my dear Juan was training, he fought barehanded with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win. But after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dream dramas. I can see those two tuckered out, down by a river going, heh, you, you sure can fight. You too, Bob, you too. Oh no, this, is, this sounds like fan fiction now. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, Bob. What a load of crock. What a load of bullshit. What a load of bollocks. That's what you want to say, Phoenix. Ever since then, fans have been giving him bears' presents. Yeah, nice bears. I'm... I'm Uncle Bear! And I say... It's barely 8 o'clock! What is that infernal racket? One of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your be your bedtime. That startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m. It's the time when the award ceremony ended that night. Remember? I'm sure flies. I don't believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Oh no. Hello, hello. This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it seemed my present did you no good. No, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. I, I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose, if I must, I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. Alright, then. A little... What is with this static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems... Bad. Connect. Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. What happened? Did Maya do something? I don't know, all of a sudden it became nothing but static. Ah, Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? Probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Um, I, you don't happen to be an electronics expert, do you? So helpful. Okay, uh... Is there anywhere else I can go? Hotel lobby? Um... Anything new at the living room? No. Bright and Co-La offices. Okay, something here. Oh, cause Gumshoe's gonna help now. Maybe Gumshoe has something. Hey, welcome back, pal. Thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That's nice. Uh, thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook. I don't have the time to eat. Whoops. Look like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding. I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There's one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. This is here an offer, and I wonder what I should try asking him about. You know anything about this? Transceiver. Oh, Mr. Nick. You should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh, yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal. When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just sounded... suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. 
Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic mag interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference. So, did the clock set it off? Why would the clock set it off? Uh, so what is electron electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Oh, the early 2000s. We live in a different time now. I remember when I'd be, like, raiding in World of Warcraft, and if the house phone called, I'd have to beg my mum not to pick up the phone because it would disconnect the internet and, like, interfere with it. I remember whenever I'd be getting a text on my phone, too, back in the day, I would always know a text was incoming because for a moment or so, I would hear, like, kind of like a little vibrate noise before the text message actually comes in. Oh my god, we're old. I still hear it sometimes. <laughs> I remember the family computer, those were the days. Ah, oh god. Huh? Computer? Bless you, pearls. Uh, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh yes, the TV does do that. So that's what you're talking about. I was amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the thing you were in when... So the room you were in when the, that interference with the transceiver happened. There's gotta be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like... Like a listening device or something. Oh shit, the bear was bugged. So they could tell when someone was in the room. And that's why there was another bear. That's why there was a bear in the assassin's living room. Or that back room, because he sent one of them in before. It must have been like a prototype or something. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Karita's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later. All right, pal. Oh uh, wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. It's investigating time. Doesn't sound right for you, Gumshoe. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. We should be going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. So, we found a listening device in the Gatewater Hotel. Okay. Alright. Any parallels here are purely coincidental. Yeah, let's hop in here. So it's the clock. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. You have the, uh, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. And suddenly, I'm, sta I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. But yeah, I couldn't get one off the, po of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I was- I, I didn't say I didn't get one. Just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. Where did you get this gum shoe? Looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh? By who? Me, of course. Ah, seeing this sure brings back memories. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? Getting that sinking feeling again. 
Okay, now I'll tell you how, how to use this baby. There's a listening device with some utter sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right, now first, let's turn let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough look-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press enter to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that are going to give off radio waves. Let's take a good look at everything and anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm gonna stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Be golly, I wonder. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? Just can't imagine the listening device being inside this alarm clock. You know, it being an electronic device and all. And it being a quite convenient place to actually conceal a listening device. It just sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in here. Really? It's not there? I mean, that's just the laptop. That's a notebook computer. You know what a notebook is? Yes, it's a small book of paper that you can write on, so? Well, that thing is like a notebook in a way. Basically a small laptop. Uh, Mr. Nick, what's a laptop? So there's a load of appliances there. Is it the lamp? Lamp, check, listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? And they're all on. Shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll be more conscientious from now on, sorry. Robot dog. Ah, what a lovely bear. It's growling us. This must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot. It's a real robot. Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick. How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um. Well, look, it's a bear, so, uh. Uh, um. Radio is on and playing something. Oh, it's the it's kids question corner. Professor, Professor, why is the earth round? Yes, why is it, Mr. Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? Is it the ketchup? Cell phone, no bugs in here. She doesn't know what ending is. Poor Pearls. My cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Korean Village. Pearls has never lived outside that village, so... I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. Lamp, check, listening device, nope. So many lamps. I don't really think the listening device is in the TV of all places. Looks like the TV was left out and it's now showing an old samurai movie. Kind of plays all sorts of international movies as well as domestic ones. You know, every time I watch one of these old movies, I always think, Wow, these Japanese stars are really good at English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to study Japanese. Probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy your dream. It's always weird with the localization that they've made it like California or something like that, but like, it's still Japan. So, like, they have to like swap a bunch of things like that. What's this? It sort of looks like a hot water pot, but... Well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess. Instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? This pot can do that? Oh, is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearl. Sorry. There's a water pot. There's a fridge. Top of the big bear. <laughs> I'm surprised it would be this. This seems like, of all things to hide a listening device in, this would be the most like awkward one to get inside the room. 
Like, why not put it in, like, a small one? Why does it need to be this massive of a bear? This is, this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? Biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. Perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's take this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No, you can't! Such, such a violent act! Oh, Gumshoe has just ripped the bear's eye out. No! Oh, there's a camera. It's a miniature camera. And it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what a minner! Transmitter pal. Oh, is this more of that high tech stuff? This tiny thing is a camera. Yep, it's a pinhole CCD camera pal. It's a small high grade video camera, mostly used to security systems. It's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it. Which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside it is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Spy camera. I have to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for an hour. It was running at the time of the murder. What is a transmitter? The device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. Like a video version of a listening device, pal. Looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. It said, said it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. Oops, one sec. There we go. Set. You can set it for a certain time. Yep, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m. That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Well, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the, the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. And if you think about the, the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime pal. Transmitter added to the court record. Stuffed bear. But there was a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. And, and I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. Pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Karita this present? I uh, don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here on that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? Possible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere. There's no real way to find out. There's really no way to find out. Stuff bear added to the court record. Okay, so... I mean, this is how he... was able to commit the murder in some way. This was all part of the plan with the hit. The clock stopped at 8pm as well. So I'm wondering what happened there. I got it! What? Hey pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm gonna go around to the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. That's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. I have to, have to search all night. I'll find your man, pal. Okay, come on, Gumshoe. You're our only hope now. He's got the evidence for it. Oh, yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. See you later, Gumshoe. He's gone. Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. Pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. A mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Oh! <gasps> You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth! What are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic. But we have to move forward, one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. 
We still have to find her. Hmm. So, there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You were one lucky man, right? Huh? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? I have no idea. Hmm. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade. And only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that, Mr. Nick? Can you really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. Edgeworth, it's a six foot tall bear. <laughs> you can't. You can't slip this one in your pocket, bud. <laughs> I'm sure you have other things that you have to do. How? How have. How did he take it? What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. Besides that, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Carita? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Juan Carita's real killer. It's Andrew's past. Kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. Ringard. And this card, Shelly the Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edward. As you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. Be continued. Gotta save Maya. She could be dead already. It's very possible. Keep going. Okay, so presumably the bear's still in the image, but Edward said he took the bear with him. Past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if Mr. Edward has already found Mystic Maya. Things take time. I'd say probably not. Police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. If we can win a... And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. Is this bear still here? Oh, no. No! No! <laughs> We're good. So this bear is presumably not here. All right, I can't, I'm amazed that the alarm clock doesn't have anything to do with it. The fact that that was like, because we've had stuff with clocks before, like running out of batteries at inconvenient times, specifically associated with murder. So I'm surprised there isn't more we can't do with that. Okay, Pearls is here. Just keep going. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? And it's past 9 p.m. already. We still have some th th things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. Still the matter of this secret Mr. Carita held about Mr. Engard. Miss Andrew's real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. Grand visiting hours over at the detention center. I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Now, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Is that we can't actually talk to the two of them. At least we got old bag. Hey, wait! What is it, whippersnapper? All I know is nothing that has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed a strange device for who knows what reason. I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. Oh no, and frankly, I don't care. The request came from Edgypoo, so... Edgeward. And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. 
So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. Thanks, Edgy Poo. So you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know. That manager woman that Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts. It's Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's Celeste, girl. She's supposed to get married, you know. Married? You mean... To Mr. Carita? Really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after the marriage announcement. Wait, what? Three days after the marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impact want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly cancelled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But why? Why did she do why did he do that? It was not in the magazines, unfortunately. Let's see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager Celeste killed herself. Game, we really don't need to see this image every single time you refer to this. Like, Jesus. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. It's absolutely top secret, so you better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Very interesting. Sure it was, you know, catch Borhan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? Oh, I think we've had some of this before. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Karita. Hey, in another secret, young one. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious, puffy-haired photographer girl. Nervous, some people. Spying on people by herself. As if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. There's no way Lotta imported the bear. That doesn't make sense. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. I didn't say anything. There's no way Lotta planted that. I find that hard to believe. Is the bear not added as evidence? No, because Edgeworth took the bear, of course, right. Lest we forget. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people there. Guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Is there anything to investigate here? We're all basically doing the same thing, staring at the empty stage. I think we we investigated some of this before, didn't we? Seats for the spectators. Nothing's going on now, though. The stage. Press conference. It was really the victim, Han Karita, trying to disclose something about Mr. Engard. But they're both heroes. Why would they do something so unheroic? They look like heroes on the outside, but on the inside, they're only human. The lobby with a grand staircase always feels enormous. When the murder happened, it was a buzz with people running back and forth. But now, since things have quieted down, it actually feels more eerie than before. It, it's always a creepy feeling when it's like supposed to be a busy place or scene, and it's just abandoned. Like, um, like, I remember walking around, like, even Dublin City and that, like, just when lockdown was kicking off. Like, by myself, of course, and keeping my distance. But it's like, the streets were just, like, empty on some days. And it was so, it's just very surreal. You get used to seeing people. The music not here as well is kind of creepy, yeah? It keeps letting me go back to the living room for some reason. Looks like no one is around. Uh, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches in his face. Shoo! Best character. Oh, there you are. Guess he's still awake, huh, Shoo? 
Doggy, come on, let's play. Wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. And I open the small door for the cat. The door, it's locked tight. There's nothing new, is there? There's another door over there. You can go on and off over there, Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. But I should go wandering over there. It's the cooking harsh. Flying motorbike. Sofa. Uh, I don't know, it's just the masks. Doesn't appear to be anything new here. Okay. Uh, back to the hotel. Has Gumshoe found anything? He might have. Doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Never mind. Yeah, he's out there without a camera asking around at all the electronic stores. I'll make some salad for him for dinner. Like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe is doing for us. Uh, Mr. Nick? Uh, yes? Where is the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. <laughs> oh, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Guess the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Detention center? This is an hour's ended a few hours ago. Looks like we're not gonna get a chance to talk to Mr. Engarda tonight. But isn't that what we- isn't what we have to ask very important? Yeah, but I don't think that matters to the guard. He hasn't moved this entire time we've visited this center. It's been two games now. Not a word out of him. Okay, criminal affairs? Feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. Engard's lawyer, right? Ah, yes, sir. Oh, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. Real decisive witness. A decisive witness, you mean for the Engard case? Is it gonna be the butler? Is he just gonna come out and say that it's like, yes, I saw this, and then we work against his testimony? I'm taking the witness statement right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edward. That's Edward up to now. Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. Mr. Nick. I mean, the kidnappers demand, and now this, I can't see a way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edger wanted me to tell you something. He did. Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. That's handy. I've already called him up so they know. Go on, talk to, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Talk to your heart's content. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Okay. Uh, back to the center. Are we gonna talk to Adrian or Matt? Sure, they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. That means that both Miss Mr. Engard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Um... I think Matt's kind of fucking useless. Adrian, we might get more information out of. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. Can't be clueless about the secret Mr. Carita had in Mr. Engard. I'd like to ask you about uh, Matt Engard if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? Reveal him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Engard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. Except it does, really. And you'll only find out in court after an emotional breakdown and I don't tell the truth four times. About Miss Celeste Impacts. I finally put her debt behind me. 
And now thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I, I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. It's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back and to burn it. I wanted to burn it, but why? I didn't want it to spread it like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. Suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Yeah, I think I don't think it's an actual no. I think the ca calling card was there, and the she tried to write something when she was killed. I think it's just been made to look like suicide. Why'd you try to frame Mr. Ingar? It's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. The police are excellent at doing their jobs, so they figure it out, right? Yes, yeah, just so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. Please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? There's only one lock. Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... Sure, I just heard Miss Andrews say, revenge. Okay, it's only one lock. Uh, I mean, we might be able to get it. Depends on what, what, um... Like what she, what, how the conversation goes, I suppose. This is Zen. Let's just see. Maybe we can get through it. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Engard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. Oh, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Engard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. And you're saying I was taking my revenge out in Matt, and that's why. What an absurd idea. I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on her people. There is some, or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Um, I mean, I'm guessing it's Celeste. Take that! It, it makes the most sense, motivation-wise. Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings, and even revenge. And that is Miss Impax's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does that have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ingard, it would mean that he must have some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? The butler? No, that's it. No, so that's not it. Yeah, our mind might chatter here. Um, we have the card, but she doesn't really know about the card because she's just been kind of holding that. Okay, I, I think this is maybe something we just simply do not have yet. We need another piece of evidence. But we got the Celeste part of that at least.
Okay. Um. Ask about the card. It was near Juan's dead body. I I noticed it when I went to fill the glass, and then when I realized that Juan was dead, I completely panicked. But I must have unconsciously picked this card up and put it into my pocket. As for why, I simply don't know. And the picture. So we know this was her now. You know, there was only one thought running through my head at that time. With this, I can finally expose Matt's true nature to the world. It's true nature. I don't know why she's saying that, but not tell me what his true nature is. For me, I think I'd be happy to finally get that kind of thing off my chest. Ask about this. Stop it. I don't want to remember this hopelessness and despair I felt back then. Hurry it up and put that away, Mr. Nick. So sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair. That's fair. Yeah. I hate trifling matters. I don't care what the reason was. It's unforgivable that he hid Celeste's suicide note. We don't have any proof that she left a suicide note behind, right? Alas, she always believed there was a right way and a wrong way to do anything. She would have left a note. I wholly believe that. It's the, the button. About this photo. The person who stabbed the boy body and opened the guitar case was me. And so you could get the Nickel Samurai's costume out so you could wear it. I thought I executed that part quite well. You showed me differently. You're a formidable lawyer, Mr. Wright. Pouring that glass of juice. Honestly, I had no idea that Juan was dead. I really, I'm a terrible woman, aren't I? One moment I'm thinking of looking after him, and the next I'm stabbing him in the chest with a knife. There was a nickel samurai costume inside of this case, correct? Yes, there was. I even personally carried it there from the studio. I always thought it was such a childish thing to dress, dress up and wear a costume like that. I never would have thought that I would wind up using it myself that night. I don't know anything about this. I was the one who organized the whole press conference. Juan wanted to deal the most damage possible to Matt's career. And that's why he was killed. Quite simply a story of cause and effect, yes? Camera. It appears to me that rumor was started by Juan himself. Mr. Corrida, but... I'm Matt's manager, remember? I think he wanted to embarrass Matt through his relationship with me. But, but didn't Mr. Corita like you? There weren't any feelings of love between us. For me, it was about getting Celeste's suicide note. For him, it was about wounding Matt's pride. That's all it was. That's, that's... The Pearls is in shock. He sees just how cruel the world can really be. She really shouldn't be here. She's supposed to be in bed already, Pearls. It's like nine o'clock. Like school tomorrow. Okay, th that's all the evidence exhausted um, with Adrian. Why frame? I don't believe we have the piece of evidence we need just yet. I feel like we're missing something. Is the chief of anything new? The real killer in the Karita murder is an assassin. This must be someone's idea of a joke. I can't believe this garbage. A little more fate in your own subordinates. They're they're busy investigating it. Oh, okay, if I go back, I can talk to Matt as well. All right, that, that's nice to know. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. Hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you, man. Hope so too. Edward just dropped a bombshell on me by saying that Juan Carita was killed by an assassin and that the assassin's client is this man, Matt Ingard. What's wrong? Mr. Ingard, there is something I must know with 100% certainty. Oh, you seem kind of different. You're totally not like your usual lawyer self, dude. Uh, about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as his nickel samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. 
It looked like somehow Han had in his hands a, a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Maybe it is just the fact that his butler is a killer. <laughs> maybe. And maybe it's just the perfect cover for the killer, so he just killed Juan. It's a bit disappointing, because there's no gambling and mafia involved with that explanation. Please fill me in on what this secret is, please. One of the guards gets the inverted colors too. Oh my god! <laughs> Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Cyclops. Is that a secret, right? But I don't have, I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? You know about Mr. Karita and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tablets, dude. Oh, but I don't know any of the details, that's what you mean. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews, he had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Karita. Her mentor was Mr. Karita's manager. Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impact's a suicide note for her. Celeste? Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. Good for a pizza? My treat. Maybe he just plays dumb. Uh, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Is it kind of pea, like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ah, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. Too bad. How about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Gringard, you connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way. What? You need to talk to me. Mr. Gringard. Dude, I know I asked you to be my lawyer and all. But I don't think I have to tell you anything and everything. Uh, what do you mean by that? This means I don't have to tell you anything and everything, dude. About this. Mr. Nick, you can't! Huh? Santa said she doesn't want anyone to know about that, remember? What's that? Oh, this? Uh, nothing. It's nothing, really. Okay, fair enough. Please take a look at this. I know it may not seem important to you. Well, if it's not important, then I'd rather be in bed. This guy. You know, he's right, Mr. Nick. Your skin's kind of drying up here and there. <laughs> that Adrian. I never thought she'd go this far to frame me for the crime. I mean, what does she have against me? Dude, I don't get it. I would like to know, too. Do you have any ideas at all, even the slightest clue? Huh, what, me? Don't be silly, Mr. Lawyer, dude. How am I supposed to know something like that? Kinda of scared to show him this card. What's wrong, dude? Oh, um, so this about about this picture card. Have you ever seen this before? No, never saw it before in my life, dude. I don't think he's lying, or is he? And again, he looked like he gasped just now. Maybe I'm seeing things. Okay. Adrian. Button ripped off. He was a bit of a talentless hack when he was alive. Jesus Christ, Matt. Who knew he could play dead so well? Wouldn't you agree? What's with our clients lately? Well, that's because he really is dead. Quite pitifully indeed, yeah? Jesus. His signature item was a guitar, ha! Huh. I mean, dude, what kind of ninja carries a guitar? Not someone who would know. Dude, it's such a kid thing to do. I mean, just my opinion and all. Isn't your show a kid's show, too? Yeah, he doesn't want to help with a lot of stuff. We haven't used the hotel guide map as evidence yet at all. He doesn't care about the tabloid report. That's a very nice transceiver, dude. Kind of an expert in gadgety things. Why does why does what he say just why why does what he just said give me a sinking feeling? Does he know about it? Like 
There's no way that Mac can be completely innocent. We have to break the Cyclops next. That Juan, posing as someone else and trying to hold a press conference. And the person who set it all up was Adrian, wasn't it? That's what I heard. Ah, I can't believe. Why would you do such a thing, dude? I like saying dude. Okay, um... I do not know if we have enough evidence, but there are five Cyclops, and we can at least scout it. Like, that is a lot. Matt's secret. Now, let's hear what the secret of yours is. What if Mr. Karita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude, I don't know. I don't know anything about Han, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. I know you pay close attention to Mr. Karita, especially on that night. Maybe I have to wait for Edgeworth to come back with the camera. Maybe it's gonna come out that, like, he bought the bear for him. And the camera inside it. I mean, it would make sense. He has extravagant props on that in his home. None of the evidence here, like, particularly makes sense. The knife doesn't really show anything. Like, paying close attention to him. He didn't know about the conference. Okay, yeah. We're gonna need to get a little more information. And then we can come back to the two of them. Is there anything new in the hotel? Oh my god. She doesn't make anything of that, does she? No, she didn't. We, tr we tried that before. Nothing else in here. Talk to Pearl. Well, I don't think we're gonna get any clues from Pearls. The real person who killed Mr. Carita was that assassin, Mr. Shelley to kill her, right? The coward Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. If that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired to kill her to begin with? Who was his client? You mean who asked for the murder? The person didn't want to dirty their own hands and blood. Whoever this client is, is still a killer. Ooh, who could have hired the assassin? I think it was Miss Miss Andrews. I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, it can't be. Matt Engard himself. Was it Matt? Mr. Engard really did hire the assassin. He is not innocent at all. Far from it, he would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Ingard, right? I mean, when he we, when we first talked with him... Mr. Ingard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Carita? Alright, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone. That includes Juan Carita, okay? Yeah, but it could be like a technicality cyclock. <laughs> like, I didn't do the killing. The assassin I hired did. Actually, that reminds me. Do you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrew said at the trial today. He said something interesting. Oh, so what was this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear, did you, Pearls? I wanted to bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. This is what I've been homing in on. Okay? This is what I've been homing in on. It's the fact that people are betting on these people. Quan bet on himself, and if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Han had in his hands a secret so powerful, it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. Engard's secret? What is the secret? I don't know yet. For now, let's think about it 
it this way. Mr. Corito is going to reveal the secret. That means... Mr. Engard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corita silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Engard. There's no way around it now. Okay, will that unlock something else for us? I'm surprised we got that dialogue through pearls of all people. I'm surprised as well I couldn't get any evidence from the clock. Pearls have any other insight? Might as well make sure at this point. And we'll rule out just lo locations. Go to the living room one more time. Nothing happened in the living room. Criminal Affairs is something new. Oh, Mr. Wright. Please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Mr. Powers! What happened? Why are you here? I, uh, oh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. Wait, are you a witness? You were with us? The decisive witness is Mr. Powers. I was talking with a detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. But all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh. They said my face and whole self in general looks suspicious or something. Well, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. I guess I I'm just a normal guy at an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? Okay, well this is a new development. About this testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. It sounded like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. Saw something important? What was it? Ah, uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. Can't tell anyone, especially not that lawyer, he said. What is justice in this world? Uh, in this society? Don't tell any information! We just need a guilty verdict! Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'll take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick! Mystic Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch, I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? <laughs> now, Phoenix, you need to get some actual friends. <laughs> this is gonna do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Because he's got that... Uh, he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. What is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn out a pretty, turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible! That's unforgivable. Wow, oh, sorry, he didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who wouldn't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him. His manager, you know, Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? I don't know if energetic is the right word, but, alright. Uh, you see, I'm actually kind of a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities on the world have this dazzling sort of image, right? Dazzling sort of image. Aren't you proud of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? Oh, more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. That's a Tinder bio right there. Get to the point. Poor, poor Will. Doesn't think too highly of himself. Well, it's okay, really. You get to hear plenty of gossip about uh, a lot of the other stars around me as things happen. Uh, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrew's mentor and her suicide? I mean, Miss Impacts. We had heard something about her, how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day. About that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Powers is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Hey, so have you heard this? The last left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went off and hit it. He heard about that in court today. There wasn't any actual proof that she had, had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Carita. Why do you figure so? 
Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man. Did she mean Mr. Karita by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? That would be... That would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. Let's see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ingard and Miss Andrews. We're both at the detention center right now. Still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Mr. Nick, your phone! Hey, that's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. Sounds kind of ominous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hello? We're in trouble now, pal. Oh, I'll be back in the office real soon. What's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened. Mr. Edgeworth, he. Edgeworth. Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal. I don't know what's going on anymore. It's no good. The end, I... Uh-oh. He got cut off. What's going on, Mr. Nick? Don't you said we needed to go back to the office right away. We should hurry back. I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about, Mr. Nick? Pull yourself together. Maybe it'll be good news. I'm sure the sinister tense music. It's gonna be real good news, Powers. Somehow I doubt that. Okay, we got we gotta run. What took you so long, pal? Mr. Edgeworth couldn't stick around forever and had to go. I came instantly. What happened? We got him. We know who bought that spy camera. This quickly. And this bear's what gave him away, pal. Bear. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Um, but wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth that figured... Pearls. <laughs> Let, let him have this. Go on. There's only one person who, who bought one of those bears who's related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy another person in the room? Matt and Guard. Huh? Matt and Guard. Fine, that's who, pal. Here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Oh, shit. Are you sure you heard right? The person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card received for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. It's an exact match to the price of that stuff there. That seems surprisingly cheap for, like, a s giant stuffed bear for your living room. I would have thought that's a lot more. Like, a lot of computers are more expensive than that. An actual bear. Inflation. Maybe there's inflation, yeah. I think that's more expensive than a PS5. I think the bear was discounted. Gotta go. Don't have... Don't have a need for it. It's not taxidermy. Especially a rare customizer that was imported from Europe. Yeah, he's like, it can't be cheap to import a bear. It's, that's a tall order. Like, we're talking, like, super rich people activities here. It's early 2000s prices, so... It was a thrift shop? <laughs> You're never gonna believe what I found in Goodwill today, <laughs> like... Ah, it's not just a receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ingar. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ingard's autograph out of a pal. I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ingard himself. My, my sight is failing me. Can't be. Okay, right, well. Credit card receipt for the bear. But what about the spy camera we found? Ah, uh, that was a dead end, pal. But you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess you can give these back, give, give these back to you for to follow away into evidence. He also had the stuffed bear on him. Okay. Right. Edward gave this to me as we were passing in the street. 
He said just pass this, like, eight-foot-tall bear to Phoenix next time you see him. No, you don't want to give up, pal. I never, th I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. First, we put the spy camera in Juan Caridia's room as Matt and Guard. Why? Why would Mr. Ingard do something like this? The bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Carita in one of their rendezvous. The bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. Ingard, I mean. Yes. I'm I'm scared, Mr. Nick. That's okay, Pearl. Maybe you should just go to bed. Maybe you should just call it quits for the night. You don't have to deal with this, Pearl. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what we will find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt and Garrett, what in the world have you done? Okay. Alright, we have all the evidence. You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. It's time you told me the truth. Relax, don't you know that ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. Okay. Magatama. Five Cyclops. Okay, we've heard up to the first point. So he was napping. I know you paid close attention to Mr. Karita, especially on that night. Take that! The camera. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Karita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow, but dude, where was this camera you're talking about hidden? Stuffed bear. Spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hm. I guess Juan had a few of those kind of fans too, huh dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Carito was... You. Mr. Engard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met, met Mr. Bear before, dude. Ah, oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? Phoenix, what is his line of question? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. Engard. I didn't know how you work in court. I think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Uh, here is the receipt for you purchasing it. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ingard. It's from you. It's from when you bought that stuff there. Dude, all you can tell from that is I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? It's $3,800. This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. I mean, it's a bit of a stretch. It's not a good deal. A $3,800 toothbrush. It's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew, elephant hair. Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway. The store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so I can ask you one thing. Yes. You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? Matt, for the love of God. No, not yet. I haven't asked you why you set up the camera yet. And what your secret is. Of course it will be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm gonna find out what I want to know. Because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Karita's room and filmed it in secret is... 
Um, what is the reason? Is it Adrian? Did he do it for her? Maybe. Adrian Andrews? There's a rumor going around. Miss Andrews and Mr. Carita were having secret meetings. You, who was keeping tabs on Mr. Carita, you were going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, can you can be such a moron. Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer dude, that kind of scandal. That's the good stuff. That's what we in the industry call juicy. The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'll be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? Wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Carita because of Miss Andrews. And there's only one reason I can think of for you to do such a thing. The real reason you set up that camera in Mr. Carita's room was... Um, the real reason, if it wasn't that, it's because he tried to kill her. I mean, that's the only thing it can be, right? It's either that or the suicide report. I don't want to get this wrong at this point because this is a very long sequence that you can't save the game for. This is a very long sequence. Um. Real re reason you set it up. Uh, official, thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you very much. I don't really want to have to go through the entire sequence again, because I know this is a long sequence. So I'm going to do it just a quick help me out chat. Is it the card? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. It's just such a long sequence that I don't want to have to go through the entire thing again. I got it right, though. <laughs> What is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly the Killer. And I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly the Killer. That's ridiculous. Why would I know someone, some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Uh, this is it. I'm finally starting to get the truth. Can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt and Guard. I know why... He I know why you know Mr. DeKiller. It's because... You're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly DeKiller to assassinate Mr. Juan Carita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... You, Mattingard. Sigh, and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Mr. Engard, you really did hire. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna consult myself, okay? 
consult myself. Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt in guard? Wait, what, what just happened? <laughs> What? What is going on? Fat secret. Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you are Shelly to kill his client? Didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? Wait, what? What? What do you mean? that woman. Adrian was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. All I care about is that Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Mr. Security Guard, do you have anything to say? <laughs> he looks a bit empty inside. That's... You're lying. What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... The weakling soon believes the words of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. I knew about Miss, Miss Andrew's secret. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And that, that's why. Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, reserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right. That video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl. Like, how did he conceal, like, the scars? <laughs> he kind of, like, moved his face slightly. Oh, it was his hair, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, his, his eye was covering it. You're right. I don't know why, but for some reason he's giving me real, like, I can be your angel or your devil vibes. <laughs> it's hard to take him seriously. <laughs> why? Why would you kill Mr. Karina? Because he was about to, to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? It's all because of that press conference, isn't it? Mr. Karita had been able to give it, Mr. Engard's secret would have. Ah, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know? I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's, that's how Mr. Karita ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. How did he get the glass of brandy? Where did that come from? I just realized. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face. And people will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin too. Oh, and how can I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone all working their butts off for me, Mattingard. Aw, oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Carita, and you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. 
Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that the killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cash nap in my room. You, you. You killed Mr. Karita. Ah ha. I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. There's a security camera. <laughs> right here. Okay? I'm begging the court and justice system to please just access the footage here. Just this one time. <laughs> Like, there's a guy on the other end of the camera right now, who's seeing this. Surely that's important evidence. It's off. Why is it off? This is after hours, so maybe the guard and the camera aren't active right now. Yeah, I'm sure that's what prisons do. Like, lights out, let's turn off all the power and electricity. Security just go- like, leaves the prison come the evening, yeah? That guard over there, he's turned off right now. There's literally a camera and a security officer here. Ah, but it's too bad, you can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya. You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, the squire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. Aye, I'll get you for this. That's such a cliche phrase. Juan said something just like that if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Please. Please say something. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, now you finally found it. The starting line of this case, Edgeworth. I don't care for the hard atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Okay, so Edgeworth's on it too. Well, well, right. What are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy. No, we can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. But what should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeward. Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn. What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer. You must find it on your own. But seriously, what do I do? I'm a lawyer. But the fight for someone who is clearly a killer. Matt and Garrett. That man is really... Ah. Uh, it doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? What exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up till now? Uh... Well, that may be true, but... But that's... That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get in guard and acquittal... That... That isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But, when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case and I, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. 
You want to save someone. That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That. You're a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. You can't fight for a false verdict. For a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca. She fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed. You were so petty. Well, actually, no, Phoenix. He was accused of murder. And then almost framed for another murder. And, you know, he was having, like, a rough time of it. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more going on than him just being petty. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What are you? Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith in you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. Before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. Oh, God. Mr. Nick! The transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Ingard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this with that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me. The man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity. Mr. Attorney, I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is part of an assassin's duty. Hey, Mr. Chief of Police! Can you hear this phone call we're having? Hey, Mr. Detective on the computer there! It's like investigating the law! Some wild shit going on here! An assassin's duty. We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I have to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney. He's on Candy Crush. <laughs> I just gotta match a better line of them. Did you say something there, Phoenix? Oh, I was one turn away from solving it. Let me spend some of my jewels ensure that you would do everything in your power at the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did, but my name is The Killer. <laughs> so hard to take seriously. Shelly The Killer. You're Shelly The Killer! Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a de killer, I always finish what I set out to do. You failed to keep up your end of the bargain. Maya, it would be my duty as an assassin to see to it she receives a nice long nap. Ah, uh, no. Now then, if you'll excuse me, somewhere to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. God forbid the authorities happen to be sitting in the background of the room right now and hearing all of our conversation. Oh! <gasps> Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya! 
shoe. I don't know what to say. Edgeworth. Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission. Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. Cat. It can't be. That cat. Can it? Can it? What is it? I think... I think I know where Shelly the killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth. Have all the police units head for Engard Mansion immediately. <gasps> Alright. You hurry over as well, then. Don't lose ho hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Shoe has saved us. We gotta run to the hotel first. It's kind of funny for getting here. It's like, I just show up at the hotel. It's like, wait, this is the wrong house. And I just leave again. I have to do that every time. Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. Assume he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. He and Engard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. The bear. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. There are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. A wooden bear-shaped figurine is covered in many thin cuts. The bear, isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corita? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, I'm sure that's for Shu. I think that this came through that little door. Look at this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edward. In we go. Ah, there's no one here. It looks at this room. I would say this is in Garrett's private lounge. Look at this right. An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals on a VCR. Check inside the decks. The, inside the deck, that is a tape. It will be an important piece of evidence. But lucky it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. There is a lot of other evidence that could be related to a lot of other cases here. No. But there's no mistake that something used it. That someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. And Garrett's computer. Maya, why couldn't you have used this to get help? Mr. Nick, where, where's the power switch? Oh, I get it, so that's what happened. She couldn't find the power switch. Can we not turn it on now? There'll be some valuable information on this. All right, never mind. The VCR and an antenna. The footage that the spy camera took at the scene of the crime. Wait, so just one moment then, like, why did Matt send us to his house to feed his cat then? Because that's the moment that we were able to eat, we even met Shu. And if, because he's done the assassination, surely he would have known. He loves his cat, but surely he would have known that the killer was trying to set all this up. Because he definitely knew that Mai was kidnapped. Right? He knew that Mai was kidnapped because he flaunt taunted us with that. So he's had communication with the killer since. He didn't trust the killer. Well, he trusted him with everything else. He could have just mentioned as like a professional client. By the way, could you feed my cat? Yeah, I don't understand that. I think that's a plot hole. Because that link and him telling us to go feed his cat is the only reason. But it's like the link that we have got to hear now. And that could have been completely avoided. Like, if he just didn't ask that. And there was no reason for him to ask it. We didn't even feed the cat in the end. That's a plot hole. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's actually a bit stupid. But that's overlooked. Dude just really liked his cat. I mean, I guess... 
but <laughs> it's not a plot hole right it is a plot hole right that's a plot hole that's a glaring plot hole if he didn't ask us to feed his cat we wouldn't be here and he had contact with the killer because he knows that Maya was kidnapped It could have, it could have very easily mentioned there and then to the killer. By the way, feed the cat. There's no point. He didn't know she was there. He did know she was there because he was taunting about how you have to represent him in court. He taunted. Yeah, he knew that Maya was kidnapped. Dude's a dumbass. He might have assumed that the killer would just hide if anyone came to visit. But he had contact with the killer. That's what I don't understand. There's no reason for him to assume anything. That's the point. He has contact with the killer because he knows Maya's kidnapped. You understand that? There is no point. And he's like, he's done himself in. Like, it's a stupid plot hole. I feel. I think that's kind of stupid, yeah. I don't like that. It's because he asked us to go feed the cat, but he knew, he knew what the setup was. He had contact with the killer. He had contact with the killer, so there's no reason for him to assume anything. Calm down, please. No, I'm just I'm just stating my case here. When people are telling me it's not a plot hole. I think it's a plot hole. I think it's just like a stupid thing to do. Feed and shoe the cat is gonna get him in jail. Like that that's it's like a domino chain. That is kinda stupid. I want you to look at the game you're playing and Ventriloquist couldn't talk without his puppet was used as a valuable witness. True. Beamed here and record it on tape. He said he didn't trust assassins. Well, he trusted this assassin with a lot, didn't he? The aftercare package, the murder. He might not like assassins, but he fucking trusts them. So no, I don't buy that for a moment. The point is, right? The point is, because people had... I, I feel like people are really defending it. He had contact with the killer. He still had contact with the killer. He knew about Maya. There is no reason for him to assume that his cat would not be fed. Absolutely none. He had contact with him. And I think that's a stupid plot hole. But why was Grossberg at the boathouse? The reason I'm homing in it is because the case otherwise has been quite good. This is like the first real stupid moment of it that's come up. And it's a shame. There's no reason. This is only happening because of the cat. But Matt knew. Uh, maybe the assassin never mentioned but he was keeping Maya prisoner. Well, that's really stupid. Why wouldn't he do that when he had contact with the person who hired him? That's the thing. They had contact. Keep going. A huge television speakers loom largely here. I'm sure if Maya saw this, she'd say, I would die a happy samurai fan if I could see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Yeah, that's what she'd say. Heck, I can't believe I just made a joke about Maya, all things considered. And the thing is, yeah, so another thing, because, like, the fact that he asks you to feed the cat is even more stupid, because he could ask anyone to feed the cat. Even if he didn't trust the killer, tell the police, hey, could you feed my cat? Contact the friend, hey, could you feed my cat? Not, hey, I'm the person, I'm, I'm black, you're the person I'm blackmailing right now, and I'm holding your friend hostage in my house, can you go feed my cat? Do you see how stupid that is? <laughs> Do 
Literally any other person could have gone to feed the cat if that was an issue. <laughs> Shut up about the fucking plot hole, please. Up. I'm pointing it out because I'm looking at the chat and people are saying I'm wrong. And that's why I'm making a point. I don't think I am. It's a big plot hole. I'm happy to just acknowledge it as is, but people are saying, no, you're wrong, it's perfect. That's a big plot hole. You're trying to cover the hole, yeah? Bet we could barely squeeze three pearls on there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, the music also doesn't help, it's quite a tense conversation. The killer tell us like this is the thing people are arguing like did this did the killer tell his client where Maya was being held captive probably not well that's very stupid also this game was made by a drunk guy that's not a defense <laughs> like that's the thing you have to forgive the game the guy was off like his rocker when he wrote it oh yeah it's okay then no it's not. <laughs> That's the thing, I don't know why people are defending that, like, so much. I think that's just a dumb point. I'm happy to leave it as a dumb point, but people are like, it's not dumb and you're wrong for thinking it so. It's like, I don't think I am. It's not a plot hole, he would rather go to prison than have his cat be underfed. <laughs> but he doesn't have to go to prison to have his cat fed. <laughs> he can ask anyone. I can't believe we're having this conversation about a cat being fed. Uh. It sounds like something they came up with because they realized they needed to string things together because the plot demanded it. It does feel like that. It feels like it got written into a corner. Like, the case is otherwise quite going quite well, but I'm gonna point out a plot hole if I see it. And I just don't know why people are saying, no, you're wrong. And that's why I'm making a point out of it there. Let the English and major in me have this, alright? <laughs> I spent years studying for this. Stupid plot hole. Let's keep going. Very large collection of videotapes. It's like Ingar taped all of his own shows. The spacious sofa, I bet 10 pros will fit on here. Okay, what, why are we talking about the sofa for? Is there anything else to get here? The wine cellar. If you're enjoying a story and then some bullshit gets pulled, you're going to notice. Basically, yeah. That's all it is. We've searched and looked all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. Looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of the district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. This looks like a picture of Miss Inpax. With love, Celeste. Miss Inpax, you mean? Yes, Miss, Mr. Karita's former manager. Why would, why would a picture of Miss Impax be here in Mr. Ingard's mansion? Why does it say with love? And this might be a clue. We didn't actually feed the cat though. That's the thing, we didn't feed the cat. <laughs> uh.
Yeah, let's keep let's keep going though. Ah, what's wrong, Pearls? Please let me see that picture frame. Oh, what's so special about the frame? On the back, there's something written on the back of the frame. Maya. It's Mystic Maya, she left us a message. What? Oh shit. I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get in guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever. I'm fine, so don't you don't need to worry. I'm already talking to you from beyond the grave, aren't I? There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. The English major that had to look up the meaning of a reverend has a problem with the game translated from Japanese. That seems unnecessarily personal and... <laughs> Why? I'm pointing out a quite relevant plot hole. And yes, I don't know every word. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Why you gotta be... I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm sorry, I didn't know a word. I hope you maybe meant that as a joke. Maybe. But... I don't know why people are defending that so hard. I'm still having fun, I'm enjoying it. get it. I don't get it. I'm still having fun with this game. Can I stress that? I'm allowed to criticize it. And I think that's valid. Yeah, let's keep going. Hurley, you're, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. Guess I'll talk to you later. That's I. No! Mystic Maya! Right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? It was a joke. Okay. Right, I'm glad that was a joke. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just poorly timed, given what was happening. <laughs> We're all good. Oh, I'm nothing. We searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Oh, I didn't get her Cyclock, did I? Miss Andrew's Cyclock. I could just find out what secret she's holding. And I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. Blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Uh, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. Why is Pearl still here? <laughs> Why? Why is Pearl still here? Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Mr. Miss Andrews. I have come to remove your Cyclock. Cyclock? <laughs> I see the chains on your heart, Miss Andrews. I'm going to unlock the truth using my mind powers. Reveal your secrets! <laughs> I want to know, and you will tell me <laughs> your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. What is happening? <laughs> you sound insane right now, Phoenix. Okay, Magatama.
Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Engard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. Because I thought Matt, Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Engard. Miss Andrews. You may think I didn't hear it. But I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was, I was taking my revenge out in Matt and that's why. What an absurd idea. You don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews. The woman who lives by being independent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. The first step of this... Uh, was Celeste. It cracks me up that Matt was the one who had to point out this child should be in bed, not listening to my confession. Yeah, Matt has a fair point there. Pearls should be in bed. <laughs> He's the only person who suggested it. Starting to come around to this guy. You think he has a gambling mafia? <laughs> Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge. And that is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Han's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Han. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him yet. For you to hate Mr. Ingard. It would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt. I mean, it's the picture. This. This is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love. Celeste. This is Miss Impacts' handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's alright, it was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. Um, but I'm going to answer the rhetorical question now. I found it in Mr. Ingard's mansion. After all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Someone give Phoenix a pay raise so we can afford a babysitter for Pearl. <laughs> yeah, he does need it. Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corita didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. Because of Mr. Engard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why... The love Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? Oh, they were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't ending as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was... thrown away. It's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful the man he is. The scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to the Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then it was suddenly called off. And the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. What? But I see. So that's what happened. But then why did Mr. Carita have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. Probably because of his worthless male pride. Wait, so... He called off the wedding because they dated in the past? Is that it? Am I understanding that right? Like, really? 
This what the fuck? Like, I don't really understand that. Yeah. That seems like a lot. Pretty much Han and Matt are petty assholes and Celeste got pulled apart by the rivalry. Oh god, that poor woman. Yeah, I feel sorry for her. Probably because of his worthless male pride. Yep. Han and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts. That wasn't the end of it. That day, Mom was certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and... Though she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. Why would he do that? Simple. Juan realized the note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, but his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. Hence the conference. Okay. And that was... At the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it from Juan. So I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. Quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Yeah, I don't like either of them. <laughs> They're awful. Even Celeste Dash was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I'd even brought a lighter. But, I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. When I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. That's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. See, what a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. Can't sleep either. Not with my situation, or what I know now. So Maya wants us to get a guilty verdict. But obviously the method here is going to be the most important thing. So, we need to lose the trial, but in a convincing way where we explore everything. That's a fantastic premise for the final case of this one. Like, we have to lose this trial. But in the right way. I'm all for that. It's actually my favorite case of the trilogy. Yeah, it, it's a cool premise. Oh, this is the nightmare again. <laughs> you can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix, right? Well, I will smite you. What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this! But I'm just a simple defense attorney! Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title! Time to die, Mr. Phoenix Wright! Oh gosh, there's blood everywhere! I've had this dream before. <laughs> This day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. We have to trust in Edgeworth to get the job done. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. 
You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? Oh god. Ha ha ha. If you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. So, people saying you didn't know about Maya? There you go. <laughs> Let's just point that out again. Grr. Now listen up, you better get in guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime back not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix. Mia. Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? He hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what? What am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But, can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Oh, the cursed and guard again. You leave me alone. Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. <laughs> Poor Gumshoe. Ah, Gumshoe, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then you have some sort of lead. Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. We're not going to give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over. Until the verdict is handed down. We're going to do everything we can to and find the killer. If we can get Maya out. You can get and guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. It's true. We could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. To make the trial last longer. You go with Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got. Then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Good man. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. I mean, while I appreciate the kind of... sentiment here, like, Maya has been kidnapped by a serial killer. Uh, basically an assassin for hire. <laughs> Strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah! The power of friendship will save us! It's like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. Court is now in session! The trial of Madden Guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being, what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you will please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that drew suspicion onto Mr. Engard and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. And then you're saying she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Carita was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Ingard. What a surprising turn of events! I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. But I know that everything Edward has said is true. We still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya's safe and sound. Would it not be possible to just tell the judge this and have court adjourned for like a few hours? Like behind the scenes kind of word, it's like, hey, we gotta postpone the trial like a few hours today. 
you know? <laughs> Is that not possible? Or, like, will the killer be, like, you have started the case 30 minutes late, I see. Maya is dead now. Like, is there no way to, to reschedule it? There's a hostage situation unfolding. It seems quite important. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Nowton, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Oh, God, I forgot about Will. Oh, gee. <laughs> Nowton, witness. Your name and occupation, please. Well, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's, uh, I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way, yeah. Oh, Mr. Powers, please! You don't need to put yourself down so much! Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, well, I'm just kind of a nuttin' sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, but you know... I didn't actually get to see that when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ingard's room. Okay, sure. This is Matt's room. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his Nickel Samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. There's nothing there that seems like a lie. Nothing sounds out of place with Mr. Power's testimony. Talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ingard was speaking to, speaking with, was an ordinary bellboy. What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? Trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? For us to find out more. We're just gonna have to charge in head first, right? I don't think Will's lying. Will would have no reason to lie here. I went by myself to Matt's room. The defendant's room. Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of. And I want to say congrats. What's wrong? Why'd you stop? Mr. Wright. What is it? You. You're going to try trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer. No, no. We've had this case, Will. You're okay now. It's Maya who we constantly accuse of being the killer, not you. You seem confused. No one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer things, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time. Witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue your testimony. Sorry. So you went to the defendant's room, and then? Hey, wait a minute, when and how did it, why, what, when and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? Okay, Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in costume. Are you sure that was Matt and Gart? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nickel samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing, standing in front of his own room? He was talking with someone I thought was a bellboy. At first, what do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, but he had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a, a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. Well, did he see his face? Because it's like... I mean, I guess if you saw someone with, like, stitching, like, all the way down their face or something, like, you know, you'd remember that. Maybe? It does seem kind of unusual. 
detergent appearance will not cool. I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I went, went, then I gave up and went back. I saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wants to say congrats. And while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel some weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? That's a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Ah, uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. They guessed me that night and I couldn't make them wait for me. So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You learned by a little pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. But I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. Like squeezing water from a stone, it's probably pointless to press further. Remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Why I was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. You see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. I don't know what to press on this. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Um... Probably wasn't gone very long. I went by myself to Matt's room. This was after the ceremony. After the ceremony. Um. After the ceremony is when the murder happened. Very soon after. Uh. I was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. I pressed every line of dialogue here, yes? Just help me chat there real quick. I pressed every bit of dialogue, yes? I believe I did. Yes, I'm pretty sure I did. Not exactly. Did I miss one line of dialogue? I thought I, pre I pressed every single bit of it. Press him again if you want a, a reminder. Oh. Felt something weird. He gave the bellboy a tip. Wait, wait, is this new? I pressed it again. Sorry, I, I didn't mean the blitz. I didn't realize I thought it was just going through the motions. Yeah, I didn't Okay, that's never happened before Right Apologies there. Yeah, I didn't mean to skip some dialogue. I thought we were just going through the motions The game has never done that. I didn't realize it was a possibility. So, literally just Will needed some time to remember, and he actually took the time to remember. And that's kind of cute. <laughs> Alright. Surprise mechanic. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit light in the game to be chucking that at you, isn't it? But alright. This bellboy. He wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Ah, uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? 
But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Paris was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Um... The bellboy's face will lead... So here's the thing, right? Because the bellboy's face leads it to suspect Shelly the killer more. Which I guess we need to do, but at the same time, I need to lose this case in the right way. If I advance it too fast... Then, like, am I gonna get Maya killed? The logic is all different for this one, because I don't know what way I'm supposed to be doing it. I guess maybe we, if we trust in the game and the progression of it, Phoenix will find a way to save the case no matter what, and it's not something I can just, like, gravitate towards. It all fails. I guess I think I have to place trust in the game to advance it, because the bellboy's face is going to be Shelly the killer. I think we're going to have to identify that it's Shelly. I think that's fine. The main thing we have to point out for now is that it's not Matt, and we have to defend it. It's not Matt. Everything else, though, we don't defend Shelly. But yeah. I'm double-guessing myself now. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, he wasn't exactly a boy. More like an old grabs. I hope you know that discrimination towards old men is a no-no of my court. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I meant at all. In the smack middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, and it went straight from the tippy top of his head to the bottom of his chin. I was like, that if that thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spill it out. Oh god, that's a real graphic image to think about right now. Ah. He was there, at a guard's house. He was that butler. What is it, Mr. Wright? Ah, uh, nothing, Your Honor. That means Engard was talking with the killer, then. If that, if that fact were to be exposed, Engard would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. Sure you don't have anything you would like to say, Mr. Wright? Uh, um, what did you just say, Your Honor? Nothing, Mr. Wright, nothing. We're just going around and around in circles. Out in Mr. Powers. Please continue with your testimony. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So I'm still not sure what I'm supposed to press. I really don't know. Is, I'm gonna just, like, so, help me out, chat. Is there another thing I can double press here? You can ask about the tip. Did I not press about the tip? Oh, no, I had another option there. Okay, thank you. I'm double guessing in a lot of ways now, because now I'm like, I have to press it twice. Um, but also, I don't want to expose this case too much. Okay, so go back to the tip. Garrett's tip. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Well, I'm sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much. Would you please clarify for the court about how much you would say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. But why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. I don't think people are just like... <laughs> Surely there's more discreet ways to do this. <laughs> in a hall in a hotel, while an event is on, Minutes before the murder occurs. I'm sure, like, with the killer's talents, like, he could just show up later and consult Matt and then be like, Payment, please. You know? <laughs> These people don't know what discretion is.
the sack with a dollar sign on it. <laughs> Here's your laundry, bellboy. <laughs> a roll of cash. Oh, well. Oh, interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. I can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Judges begin to look awfully suspicious of us. Oh. There's nothing to really object here. But if I wait and see, you might just be more suspicious. I think I still wait and see. There's nothing I can really object to here. Yeah. I mean, who can argue that a fat roll of money isn't really odd? So suppose that roll of cash was not a tip. And what was it? Payment, your honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of, of Mr. Juan Carita. Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw... Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses now! Mr. Edgeworth! You don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I mean... We can consult, like... A past game of cases, Edward. Uh, I have here, the carriage Shelly the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelly the Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin. Shelly the Killer. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No nut, no nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify! Tell us what you saw! Yes, sir. Right away. Not looking good. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. But that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Curita's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much. That's all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. The Killer. Then we shall see. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. If that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha! 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 This is no laughing matter. Okay. I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. That seems fair. The bellboy came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform after all. All the bellboys also have stitching down the entire front of their face. Well, you see. Well, he had those stitches in his face. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was t talking with a bat. Which room did the bellboy come out of? Okay. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's, Juan's room, alright. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? The bellboy seemed out of place. But what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damage a thing he's going to say next. Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart, he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hey, Green, it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Shall I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or...? 
tried to pull a fast one. <laughs> oh, I gotta see what this does. There was nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. If you two are done being school children, bellboys have for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. I'm gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious. I see, very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> now it's... Yeah, it's actually updated. Are you saying that it's susp suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw the bellboy... He was holding the tray in his hand. There was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Well, I'm pretty sure it was tobacco juice. If you come up with some sort of reason as to why you would come out empty-handed. Some sort of proof. I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. We have to be the assassin. So we're honing in on the fact that he delivered the juice. Like, he just left the tray in the room. I don't think that's too unusual. You know? <laughs> but we have to home in on this because, like... Otherwise, Maya dies. Like, I've gotten room service before and they leave the tray. They don't- they don't take that with them. If they're just holding the tray, they just drop it off there. Bellboys have the trays surgically attached to their palms. So I'm sure you have to be the assassin. Please don't be so quick to judge. Ah, uh, but it's kind of- it's kind of a powers family thing. Think of every person as a thief. Well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. At the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But, he really is the assassin, you know. <laughs> yes, but, can't give in yet. I'm going to prolong this trial for as long as possible. I'm going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one. <sighs> God, that's wild. So the logic is going to be different for this. The logic is different, so like, I'm not trying to prove it, I'm trying to prolong it. But the game's still gonna want a logic for me to show, well, this is bullshit. Um, and I'm just curious what that's gonna be, because like, you can very easily fabricate a lot of things. I could say that, well, the juice was delivered and he was about to drink. Oh, that's what it wants. <laughs> Alright. Mr. Powers. Yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the, the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches, and, and... So? A baseball has stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Why is there, like, dramatic confrontation music playing for that? You can't just accuse a baseball! Oh no! Well, there's also- I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This- This is the crime scene! There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Carita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would take a look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner there, Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Carita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. But That would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room! Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Carita was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth! Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route! <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, 
Isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say, empty-hand it. I'm not following. I recall that you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch back black letter ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black letter gloves? Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Well, actually, no, it didn't slip his mind. Edgeworth told him to stop. Edgeworth was withholding that information till him. That's not Will's fault. Why is the judge angry at him? Boy, does, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious? He could just be wearing gloves. I don't know. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black letter ones. So, a football is made of letter. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they are made of letter? What are these, like, defenses we're making? Oh no! But that man! He received a large roll of cash from the defendant! And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black letter gloves! I don't, really, I don't think that even someone like myself could believe he was just another bellboy! It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now, then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh, yes, please tell us more! Okay. Their second meeting. After leaving Duan's room, the bellboy went and knocked at Matt's door just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then went back to my seat. That does not look good. <laughs> well, the bellboy after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Oh, clicked off it. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident, I say you saw too much. All, and all of it was suspicious to high heaven. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. God. He went and knocked on the door. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spy him. Well, I think the point is, where did you all watch this all from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the barrel by left eye, the sort of sneaky spy-like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. Oh, yeah, just a quick little thing. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna take just a quick old pause. I have to share a thingy real quick, and I want to show you guys just one little bit from the video. Duh. Give me two seconds. Uh, uh, the video that's going up tonight on the channel is actually the Pokemon Platinum highlights with Point Crow earlier this week, where I lost my mind playing the game. Guys, he's a YouTuber. <laughs> I just need to give it just a cheeky little plug. Some people that can't catch the streams and that, but, you know, they're, they're there for the videos. Some people just don't hop over to the streams, too, which is always a little weird. I know that it's a bit odd whenever I, like, post, like, a YouTube pilot and that. It's like, people are like, I'll watch that now. It's like, I'm streaming right now. But I still gotta share it anyway. The each their own, you know? You have a Twitch channel. Mind melted. Playing this, and yours will too. There we go. Just popping them out. It's nice with Barrow with me on this. There we go. Okay, and there's just a quick bit 
of the video I just want to show. It's like... <laughs> okay, so... Hang on. It's just one little segment from it. The entire map. What? Calm down there. Calm down there, me. You don't need all that. That's the wrong monitor. Me. Aha! <laughs> Where is it? So, I, I, like, this is... I do, like, a cheeky bit of just the U2's promo in this, but it's just... <laughs> from Link for the... For some reason, when I was doing the U2's promo... <laughs> I had the terrible idea to record this scene. <laughs> Please do not actually do this. Um, but I just wanted to share it with you. I thought... I thought it was funny. <laughs> they do fit very well in the cupcake holders. Uh, but yeah, there's like, there's like a little bit of like the U2's promo on that, just because we're gearing up to release those next week. But that's all I wanted to share. Uh, you can watch the rest of the video, like, for yourselves whenever you want. I just wanted to get that bit in. <laughs> I felt, like, disgusted with myself when I had the idea for it, but it was also quite funny. Just to, like, it's just, like, a few seconds right at the end. Where it's just, like, Cupcake goes in the oven. <laughs> do we put the wheels in the oven to evolve it? No, please do not do that. Please do not do that. You weren't disgusted, you were a laughing liar. Truly, don't tell them that. <laughs> they don't need to know. <laughs> oh, she's yelling from the other room. It's terrifying. Oh, God. Uh, let me just do one other quick thing then. Let's... I have to... I promised Crow as well, just on the video. Because, um, what is it? The the Platinum Randomizer we used, he's actually going to be releasing that on his channel later in the month. And I promised I'd just give that a mention in, like, the comment on that. So I just want to make sure I get that in. Thanks so much to Point Crow. For this challenge. Pokemon Platinum Randomizer we use. We released your Point Crow's, Crow's channel soon with his own video. There we go. Just one other second. There we go. Now, thanks for bearing with me there, folks. It's just a bit of housekeeping on that. Just easier to do it when it goes live, because otherwise you get like, a bunch of people are asking, like, well, hey, where is it? You know? Cause less confusion. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, we're gonna keep going. This music makes what you are doing so suspicious, RT. <laughs> I have some laundry to take care of. Give me one minute, guys. Uh, just be- I'll just be two seconds. It's just taking a moment. It's just- Don't know what's going on here. There's some real tough laundry. <laughs> oh, no. It's the Mafia. <laughs> Stop smacking Gilbert, Dad. I haven't seen Gilbert in a while. I don't know where he is. <laughs> I might need to clean out the cupboard again. I think he's under something. Okay. Yeah, he gave something to the person inside the room. I said hold it. Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us more details. Oh, uh, okay. I should probably ask him only one question at a time.
Um. Should I clarify this? It's so hard to know with the logic of the game now. Normally I'd be like, tell me what these details are. I don't want the details. Because if I ask about the person inside and they say Matt. Well, actually no, because Matt was asleep. So who is the person? And then it's not Matt, and then that clears Matt's name a bit more. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Uh, well, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Holy well, an arm! And you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ungard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Ungard himself, I'd say. What well, if the arm was the clockwork arm? Then that means it would have still been Adrian in disguise. No, because no, she she wasn't dressed up at that point, was she? She wasn't back. Yeah, because the murder took place and then she found it later. Okay, actually, never mind. Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room a thing. Okay, you know what? Let's just find out what the something is. What is the something? He gave something to this person. Yeah. And what was the something? Ha ha ha. If I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a sub, would I? But it implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up, up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edward, is, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Mr. Prowers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy had it off. Um, well, let's see. I think it was... No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. I think it was some sort of wooden statue. A statue? Yeah, it kind of looked like wood, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm gonna have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You're gonna have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with your testimony. What did the bellboy do after that? Oh god, is it the bear? It could be the bear. But the problem is if I show this... If I show this, then this is going to incriminate things even more. That's the problem. Like, I like that would normally be the solution, but now it's like, no, you're gonna like soft lock the trial. I almost don't want to press that. Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Ingard's room? Well, he opened the door to Viola Hall, went in there, and who knows after that, right? I do. I'm back to the bathroom. See anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh yeah, I saw that wolf thing. What? He saw something else. It was this jittery alien with a ray gun. Oh, that's just old bag. It was watching Rod's door like some sort of stalker. Oh, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was was just as vague as his first. A little troublesome, isn't it? I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clear. Well, it just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? What a lose-lose situation. I mean, I think I know what that is. I have to trust the game here, then, to not end. I don't want to do this, though. But I have to trust that the game will keep going. What was that point? What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up! Uh, it was me, Your Honor. 
What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright! If you have something to say, please spit it out! Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's a sub. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. And I recall he found this at Matt and Guard's mansion. At the defendant's house! Yeah, so this is the problem. I have to trust the game. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Charlie the Killer assassinated Juan Corrida in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. Engard and the bear being found at Mr. Engard's mansion would be It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Engard is the killer's client. Order, order! I said order! Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah, I shouldn't have presented that. <laughs> Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. The judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edward would have. I almost forgot that he knew about it too. I think it is clear that there was no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. It has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Okay, save it here. It's so hard to know how to proceed in this because... Again, him being found guilty right now is a problem because Maya dies. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? person who received the bear. I could try to strike his testimony. But, yeah, I think the person is the best course of action. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of Ah! What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why! Oh yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it! Oh boy, it's not looking good. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Paris? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order! Looks like you've dug your own grave, yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt and Gard is a Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we made it all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now, Mia? Help! You don't have time to, to act lost. You've got to find another angle to attack this from. Hurry! Now I will bring this cross-examination to... Your Honor. Again, Mr. Wright! You've already removed any and all questionable areas of this testimony! It's about time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are... There are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? Um. But this is where we were. So if I say the person who received the bear again. Um. Just, just a quick help me out chat. If I say the person who received the bear again, it will just repeat, won't it? I just want to make sure of that. Yeah, it does. Okay, I'm just, I, I, just so it's not like you have to press it twice. Because I, I was thinking like, well, it not, might not be him. It could be costume again. Power's testimony. 
Mr. Power's testimony, of course. Huh? Your, your inanity stupefies me, Mr. Wright. We've already clarified all questionable points during the cross-examination just now. Wasting time like this, calling the testimony questionable. I'd say it's your head that's questionable here. Oh no. Yes, I agree. Cross-examination went smoothly and there was nothing wrong with the testimony. Now and I believe. Please wait. You're being very persistent today. But I can't let it end like this. I know my outburst just now was a little questionable. Questionable indeed. But... There really are some questionable points left to discuss, Your Honor. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that! So it must be the bear, then. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear! Mr. Wright! This was found in Mr. Ingard's mansion. However, Mr. Ingard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh! I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. Ingard who took this bear to the mansion. Why, that's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home! Disaster averted, it looks- uh-oh. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ingard's mansion. With this area completely surrounded, there's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. The butler. All this time, he was the killer. The killer and Ingard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Ingard mansion, as its butler. What a... what a bold move! The bear figurine was brought back to Ingard mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, and Gard had him do so. I assume it because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Why did they feel the need to take a keepsake? This is just like a petty pride thing. Yeah, I'm gonna steal this bear. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. It's too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I think we've heard enough! We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion! As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room! Everything has become very clear! The client, who hired the assassin to commit the murder, was Mr. Madden Guard! I see no reason for this trial to continue! Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict! Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright? You could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edward has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? I, I have to prolong the trial. The verdict is going to be guilty. I, if I don't object now, I have to hope that anime court finds a way to object. <laughs> so let's go. I will now announce my ver- oh, gosh! There is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Prosecutors hate him! Learn how this one defense attorney prolonged a court case much longer than necessary. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at Ingard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. Oh no, is this how the Mafia is going to be brought into it? It's the Mafia, Your Honor! The Mafia did it! It was all the work of the Mafia! Oh no... Oh no... 
The conspiracy theory. The real client! Yes. Is this all you have? Now, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client, and therefore the real murderer? Uh... 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 <laughs> it was Edgeworth. He was gone a while. Was it Juan Carita? I, d I don't know who to point the finger at here. I have no idea. Old bag. Let's go! Take that. You've let me down, Mr. Wright. Huh? I know you are aware of the truth, and you are free to turn your eyes from it. At least try to make some sense while you're doing so. I'll give you another chance! Don't squander it! Yeah, I gotta save it here. I mean, the only other person would be Adrian. Adrian Andrews! But I know she didn't do it! Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt and Guard for the crime. By wearing a spare Nickel Samurai costume. Oh! Then, then the Nickel Samurai arm that I saw! That could have very well been Miss Andrews. Even though this doesn't fit in the timeline whatsoever. Well, what about Mr. Agard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right! Then, finding this figure at Mr. Agard's mansion! It was a very well laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edward, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. This is with this trial. Come on, anyone can tell him Guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty. It's murder of all things. This is the save Maya. This is the save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! Order! All disrupted parties will be forced to leave the courtroom! Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with this his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. Killer did especially did speci specially bring that bear to Ingard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who would clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well, then the court will take a short ten-minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. Oh my God. Well, we've survived the first bit of it. We have to keep going. Uh, just one second. Sorry about that, gang. Oh, don't spill the brandy. <laughs> it does seem to swivel it quite aggressively. Having a good time. 
What are y'all doing? Getting some water. I uh, went to do some more laundry. Sorry, I missed a bit. <laughs> that's not brandy, that's chalky milk. I feel like it'd be even more menacing if it was like chalky milk, somehow. Oh god. Okay. Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt on Adrian. I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Pearls, where's Mia? I don't know. The really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power. A phone call! Oh, Mr. Nick! Your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. You just barely found something to latch onto. Sure, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Meyer are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time. If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. Have I just ran out of luck this time? Is all our hope for not? A tent? Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I can see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Just leave Maya there. It's okay. It's not worth going back. Sometimes they don't they don't all make it home. Maya so Maya's somewhere within the 300 foot radius of the main tent. What okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About a 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And and I could see a mailbox under the window just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her, an old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Which is luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? He's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. He's being starved. Gumshoe, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya is rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. How long can the human body survive without food? Curious question. It's only been like three days, isn't it? You'd be very hungry still. But you can go a while longer, I'm sure. It's three days without water. Yeah, like, water's the main one. Depends on the body size, too. I guess maybe if she's just being, like, starved, as in, doesn't have anything to drink. That makes a bit more sense. Otherwise, she's just very hungry. <laughs> She'll be okay yet. Okay. Let's get back in there. I just wish I had a burger right now. Get you a burger, Maya. We're gonna get you out of here. Court will now reconvene! The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. 
Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before? That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? Alright. Why? Why does she... The bear figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's, it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. So this figurine! It's a container of sorts, is it? Oh shit, is the missing suicide note gonna be inside? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship! Oh yes, I nearly forgot! You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Okay, an elaborate puzzle. So you can take it apart, and how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh yes, I see! After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh! This is most interesting! Boy and his new toy. Like he's five all over again. <laughs> this is the hardest the judge has ever concentrated on anything. <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, don't mind me! Go ahead and carry on! I think he's lost it. <laughs> so what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? Small cavity. How do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. And this? This is a present from you! That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for Juan. But it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue your testimony. If you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. But who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. But I doubt there are that many people with the same bear in this country. This looks like this could be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get what's inside. Well, it's a toy. But it can never be the same again once it's been broken. So what actually is inside it? Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. As long as Juan never told anyone either. And only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? And of course that means Mr. Engar didn't know, right? You don't know anything about this figurine. We should try to find out more for now. Yeah, I'll keep pressing her for more information. I think I pressed most of it. A puzzle. That's right. But it looks like an ordinary figurine! True enough. People who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. I think this is about all I'm gonna get for now. Uh, a wooden puzzle with a hollow inside, only Karita and Andrews know how to open it. I mean, I'm, the suicide note has to be in there then. It's, uh, it only makes sense, so that's where it would be hidden. Do you think that's why he... Got so many bears as well? Or were the bears really gift from fans? Maybe he bought a bunch of bears himself to kind of conceal it. He never wanted anyone to find out. But you know, because Juan did want people to find out, because it was Matt's secrets in it, wasn't it? Yeah. He was, oh, but he was keeping it there for safekeeping. That's right. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize. That there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Now that we have agreed to, at, to this point, there's only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next. Witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. One second, guys.
Apologies there. He's opening the bear IRL. I just have some more laundry to take care of. So much laundry today. <laughs> and nothing else. Oh no. I don't know why it's so suspicious. The mafia is coming for him. They found me. Painful silence in the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now. She solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. They've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess what, what this is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Corita's former manager, Celeste Impacts. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts. But just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corita himself. It seems Celeste Impacts had, ver had very beautiful handwriting. And she's just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. The order! Witness! Did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public, but I couldn't find it anywhere, because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edward's pace. Okay, one other question then. Um, this bear was so important to Matt, and the killer that, you know, he had to collect it and drop it to his home. Why did he leave it on the floor? <laughs> In very easily accessible plain sight. I guess the killer, like... Shoe got it. It was on the couch down. It wasn't the couch before. Yeah. Oh, I think I get it. It was on the couch before, so it was hidden in that locked room. I think Maya pushed it through the cat flap at some point. Before she was taken. I think that would make sense. It seems a bit weird to have a cat flap to, like, the high security room in your house, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, this is where we commit all our murders and, uh, record evidence, but we gotta let poor old Mittens in here. You know, she really likes to curl up in the corner. Next to all the murder videos. Ah, oh, God. That the suicide note has been found. What's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least that's what I would think. Now, and I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. Can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her notes, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and thrown away by Ingard. About being engaged to Karita, and Ingard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. That's all Miss Impacts had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. Ingard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word! Matt and Guard values above all else is refreshing like a spring breeze image. 
Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. It's the last suicide note added to the court record. Tells, of, of, tells us of Ingard's horrible misdeeds. Ingard's fault that woman killed herself. And this time he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible with a selfish person. Wait, can we actually backtrack? Because, like, part of the reason she killed herself actually was because Juan... Like... Was so petty about... Engard seeing him. Juan's at fault there. More, I, I would say, as well. Yeah, because he couldn't let it go. Engard's still fucking at, like an asshole. He's done a lot of terrible shit. But, like, that was a big... That was a big driving factor in that. And that was... Juan who really just couldn't move past that. Juan was manipulated by Ingard. We know that? Yeah, they both suck. I feel like Juan should be mentioned there too, but... Mr. the Killer's client goal was to obtain the suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. Seems that we have come to the truth at last! The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence. Figure in the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. Gavel is already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! Suicide note with the figurine. Which one should I? Uh, th these should I pursue? Uh, um. I mean, if I pursue the figurine, I don't know if the figurine's gonna lead anywhere. If I pursue the note, then I, I'd be trying to refute what's on it and the contents of it. That's the only thing I can think of. I think that matters more than just the figurine. We're gonna have to address them both, realistically. But no, I, I think the, the note is the more important thing. The figurine doesn't matter so much. The note was inside the figurine. Please wait, Your Honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. Still going at it. Like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think your honor believes that Matt and Gard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corita until the night of the murder. If that is the case, I say that Matt and Gard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. That actually is a very fair point. The note was rumored, but he wouldn't have seen it. Would the killer have even known that it was inside the bear? I mean, he must have to some capacity. The killer must have known if he collected the bear and handed it to Matt. But... You can keep it going with the logic, a bit, just don't think too hard about it. Exactly, but I didn't think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Order, order! Make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well in this one. Fortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? 
Except that spy camera was in my possession. <laughs> Matt and Garrett and the victim both thought of the others as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Carrito, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt and Gard. Order! Order! Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. You, don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not that same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house in a hunch. Using this. Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found in this camera. Man, guard's fingerprints were on there! Is this... I mean, he's guilty, yes. But how do I defend this? Because, like, this is getting impossible. Well, Phoenix, looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ingard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that ma man the bad killer guy? Don't look at him. The way he's sweating is just so, ew, nasty. <laughs> Yes, Chief. Have you figured out what you're going to, s to do next? What I'm going to do next is running away like a frightened child work. I know it seems like Mr. Edward is very close to putting the lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? It's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. I'm gonna have to save it here. Something he should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded. And not remember to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we fully understand it. Finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright? You don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked at? Or should I let it go? I gotta go. I have an objection, Your Honor. That was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, You've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Well, Mr. Edgeworth... Yes, I do believe some special examination is needed. But I think the item that should be examined is the defense's gray matter. <laughs> Whoops! Mr. Wright, after this trial is over, I would like to see you in my chambers. I think there are a few things we need to discuss. We've been over this so many times! Sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> Let's go again. Objection! Okay, and we'll save it here, just in case we get it wrong. Something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Is it Celeste's photo? That's the only thing I can think of. I 
Celeste. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yep, that, that would make sense. Wit loves Celeste. We can kind of cling to that for a while. No? Surprise is not that. Um, <laughs> is it going to be something like, wait a minute, if you turn over the suicide note, this clearly says in it, Matt didn't do it. Like, you remember we had the receipt case? <laughs> like, no one checked the back. This is actually a receipt that shows that Matt purchased and not a murderer license the day before. I rest my case, Your Honor. No. That is Ms. Impact's suicide note, right? Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear. But this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh! So as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not. That is yet to even be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright! You can't seriously be suggesting! Mr. Wright. You. Are you saying this suicide note is so fake? Miss Andrews. You were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Engard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? How dare you? Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have who could who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. There go our glasses again. <laughs> Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt and Guard. I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth. You were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. That's enough! Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? This is as the defense has stated. The handwriting is yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible. That's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. You're just going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. And right in analysis, my butt. That's just a lawyer trying to buy more time. Garrett is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> It's not a pantomime, but it might as well be. <gasps> what is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe. What is with him? And what's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh, he got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them are already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. Thankfully, no one else in the court heard that phone call I just had. 
knocking a phone bypasses court. You hear that? The column for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't. For us to come this far and. Oh! What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edward. I can't do that. Mr. Wright! Would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edward, catch. <laughs> Wait, was that like a JPEG image trouble? <laughs> Animation. Mr. Edward! Please, you gotta buy us some more time! Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying. Mr. Wright! This is a court of law! I'm sorry, Your Honor, but. Sorry, I had to. I had to take a phone call there, and Edward had to t catch it as well. <laughs> he would lose his license instantly. I'm reluctant to do this. However, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. This time, I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Anime finds a way. Please wait, Your Honor. Edgeworth. What? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests in this piece of evidence in that time. Can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for today and then reconvene tomorrow? We gotta go for lunch! 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. Be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Oh, God, it's still going. Right. Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. We can't find her in that time. <sighs> Report. Oh, I... Is that Mr. Edward? We don't have time. Just spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed him, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho, ho, ho. I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I have to. I'm really sorry, sir. But I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. Hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. My hunk of drunk car. I'll say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Hey, Gumshoe's breaking the law. All right, just get her in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. <laughs> Gumshoe, no! You're no good to us if you have, get in a car accident. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. Oh, no. <laughs> no one can stop me. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> no! Oh, god damn it. Why did you have to run every red light, Gumshoe? To obey the traffic laws. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Awesome. If we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. 
Well, if there is one way we can find out where he is, then we have stand a chance. Why, oh why did Gumshoe have to get into a car accident now? Oh my god. This case just keeps going. Every time you think it's like gonna, like, it's over. Or like, resolution is in sight. The stakes just pick ramp back up. Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? <laughs> Am I gonna be like, okay, Pearls. It's up to you now. <laughs> but I'm ace! <laughs> Uh, there's a way? That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Transceiver? That would be the only thing that makes sense. Right, we're not in the middle of a mock trial here. Guess this won't work, huh? I don't- I- okay, what- it's not the bear. Transceiver. The transmitter? We'll find it. It could be- it could be a person? What is it actually just- it all comes down to Pearl. No, it's not that. <laughs> Gumshoe can do it. I don't. Okay, it's not a person. It's not a person. Camera? I would have thought it would have been one of those two things, honestly. There's nothing else here that's like electronic equipment. I'm surprised it's not the transceiver. I imagine it must be a person. If it's not the transceiver, then it has to be a person. Is it just Maya? Divine Maya. No. What am I missing? I mean, I've ruled out, like, it's not the bear. <laughs> Let's just rule out the bear. Okay, try every I item, one of them will work.
There is a way. Camera's not gonna do it. Magazine clipping will not do it. Guitar case will not do it. Wine glass will not do it. The reports won't help. Card won't do it. Rolling out possibility. Hang in there a moment longer, Gumshoe. <laughs> You're almost there. Is it a person? Is it Matt? No, if I if I do the killer? There's apparently a way, but I've tried almost everything now. Try them. If we channel Celeste, no. I don't think we can do that. I tried the transceiver. It wasn't the transceiver. I'm actually surprised it wasn't that. Like, <laughs> the other person who's dead. No. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm close on anything, <laughs> like... I think I'm right in thinking it's a person. It wasn't either of the phase, it wasn't Gumshoe. Franziska? It's actually Franziska. Because she has the tracker on him, of course. Oh, yeah, we forgot about that plot point for a while. Why are you bringing up Franziska at a time like... Oh, I see. I'll try getting in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Franziska, will she even want to help us? Edward, what is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty. What I'm doing now. I'm pinning the guilt on, onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, it can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict. Prosecutor Edgeward here. Yes, Balak. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. I'll probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is, is you must do. Okay. It all comes down to if we can find Gumshoe then. We need to find Maya. This, that was the last recess, so this this is the end game now. 
for today's trial. I don't think we're gonna have a day three. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem as like it's gonna make any sense if there's day three. Like, yeah, I think this is it. Let's go. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? Aye, that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? Just one second, my mic... Let just slipped a little bit. Let me just fix that there. Looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, you can please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This, this note was not written by Miss Impact herself. It was, a, it is a fake. Order, order! Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impact, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however. It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Han Karita. Mr. Karita? Well, well. Looks like Miss Impact never left a suicide note after all. He never wrote anything about Ingard. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ingard could not have known that, and so that fact remains unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. That does sound very plausible. Theory that Ingard had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Do I have evidence of that? I don't think I do. It's no use. Something feels wrong, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Actually, there is something I would like to ask. Mr. Edgeworth, you had stated something earlier to the effect of the defendant had spied on Mr. Karita's private life. I believe this would mean that he would have known about the note as well. That's it. Yes, and so naturally. This means Mr. Ingard would have known that the note was a fake. Oh shit. Order! Order! See here, Mr. Wright! Um, yes, Your Honor. I was the one who thought of the spying thing! Jumping in and stealing my thunder like that is simply... I can't even describe it! Ah, yes, sorry. I could have even bragged about embarrassing Mr. Edward to my grandchild, had you not. For that, I assign you a penalty, Mr. Wright! Oh, come on, Judge. You're giving me a penalty. Because you make a valid point in the case. And I like support that. It's like, yes, that makes sense. It's so petty, yeah. What? If only I had kept my mouth shut. So the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Engard's motive for murder was has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ingard monitored Mr. Karita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ingard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth! Looks like this time, it is you who has dug his own grave. As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edward, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Engard's motive true evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Edward Stuttering, it's not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edward? This witness is the one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? 
That's that's impossible. Who in the no such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty? Yes, Mr. Edward. Who is this witness? It is. It's um. Yes, go on. Who is it? Oh shit. The man himself, Mr. Shelley the Killer. Have we found him? Oh, Mr. the Killer. Wait, Shelley the Killer? Um, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean the assassin. Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is this all right? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. How are we getting him on the stand and why is he testifying? The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edward, is there no other way left to us? Is it like a radio? Now then, witness. Um, your name. And your occupation, please. Okay, it's a radio. But why would he agree to do this? This is, like, and he's on the run right now. What? He's being chased. What the fuck? <laughs> Very good, sir. My name is... Charlie the Killer, and I am a professional assassin. I say! What is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. the Killer will testify to this court. How many laws does this break? This is a trained assassin. On the phone. Like, th there's so many things wrong with this scenario. <laughs> well, and he's on the run right now. Why would he do this? This must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. The Killer himself. Witness, please present some proof that you are, in fact, Shelly the Killer. I understand. Please wait a second. <laughs> oh my god! Here's proof that I'm, like, the real killer. Here's my hostage. What the fuck? <laughs> Like, th this is so illegal! Like, Edgeworth will be arrested for this. There's no way you can do this. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! A voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. Looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events! Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so- You're going to allow this? Like, imagine the scenario. <laughs> the next witness I would like to call to the stand is a serial killer who is on the FBI's most wanted list. He currently has a hostage and is evading capture from the police. He's told, told us that he will testify in this unrelated case should we let him get away and not try to track his signal. Well, I don't see any issue here! Thanks for being a good Samaritan, Mr. Killer! <laughs> like, in what world? <laughs> I'd like to call the Zodiac Killer! <laughs> Like, that's what it's like! <laughs> that 
That's what it's like right now! The Zodiac Killer has promised that he will testify uh, as long as we don't track the source here. In what world? Uh, I know we called a parrot to the stand, but like that's more plausible than whatever this is. That's more plausible. Because at least with the parrot, like the parrot repeats sentences, so there might be something valuable to learn there. Like there's no. <sighs> All right, let's let's go with it. We also called a puppet, but not by choice there. If it was me, that character would not exist. Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Carita. Is this correct? It is, as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Carita. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it, a bad dream. Tell you the killer. What is he going to say? There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Mr. Killer seems to be a very clever man, but all the say he seems to be mocking us. Well, you may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. Killer is our only state in the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean this about... You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. No way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. This is wild. <laughs> trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. But, Mr. DeKiller, we know what you look like. You have a very distinct, like, characteristics. We've seen you twice! And that is why you're testifying in this matter. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the, the killer name so my clients can trust me. God forbid anyone suspects the, the killer name of any wrongdoing. <laughs> Didn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... That's enough! Please, no more! Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside their prescribed role. Their role! This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You! Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? The gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? Ah, oh, no, no, I uh, didn't say anything! Judge had better watch himself. You can't judge. Seize control of your courtroom. What is going on? Hey. Press this. 
We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say, but before I do... An egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close. So you're gonna have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. There's something I must first state. Uh, okay. We have to press everything. If we can hear anything you have to say later, can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. You know what the word first means? Sorry, go on. Well, the pieces is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. Only because you don't know about Maya's situation. You don't really care about all the extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Did I press everything? Um, I pressed it all, didn't I? What did I miss? I did first state, assassin, reason, and I did wish, didn't I? Sorry, just help me out, chat. Which one did I miss? I pressed all of these, didn't I? Oh, it's the double press. Um, sorry. Yeah, I keep forgetting it's a mechanic. It really messes with you. Yeah, because, um, okay, I, that's only been introduced in this case. So press this one again, is it? Okay, just press them all again. Press it all again. Screwed about identity. Okay. I'm sorry, but I was just wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? The case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You've made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. If he's breaking the trust, though, why is Maya still being held hostage? Because he's only doing that for Matt. Excellent. And I believe it's about time I revealed the name of my client, don't you agree? What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corita? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Witness. That's not what you- that's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell. What are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client. And it is Adrian Andrews. Oh shit. Oh my god, the twists! 
this can't be. On the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. The Killer just stabbed Mr. Edward in the back. Stabbed Edward in the back. I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. The Killer told him a different name. Matt and Guard, perhaps. I knew it. This, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. You, Shelly the Killer. My testimony is truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt and Garrett, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. God damn him. There's no line he won't go to. Because I was thinking for a moment, if he betrays Matt, suddenly it makes sense as to their communications before, right? And here's the kicker. I would have understood the fucking not feeding the cat if he said Matt there. Because then Matt knew that something was up. But he's still protecting them. So the cat plot hole still stands. <laughs> wow, all of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. <laughs> the mafia fed the cat. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive that has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself, the name of his client. Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all of this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Martin Gard it is innocent! I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Oh my god, it's still going. Malif, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews immediately! But now, with the way this is going, and guard will be found innocent. Maybe our last chance. Save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edward is right. The killer is lying. And in guard, my client, I know he's guilty. And I live with myself if I win this. Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Charlie the killer is certainly lying under oath. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. A testimony just now. It was all one big lie. Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. A testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. This actually does go back to something we thought earlier, that um, the killer killed Celeste and made it look like suicide. Maybe he set it up in such a way that New Juan would find it. But he knew that intentionally this, this note was a forgery. By making the suicide note a forgery, there's like a gymnastics here, but by making the note a forgery, it actually absolves Matt of that suicide note. It's like kind of hiding crimes in plain sight. There's a sort of odd logic to it. Maybe that's what it is. We'll find out. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button. John in the nickel samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We all know that Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. You want to follow her. You want a revenge against the two who hurt her. So say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... no, Mr. Wright. 
You. You know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. Okay, save it here. This is it. This is it. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? I have to believe in Gumshoe. Yeah, I can't just take the verdict. I feel like that's a bad end. Let the trial continue. Phoenix. Can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know. But. But Matt and Guard is a killer. A murderer. I can't. I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I am no better than Ingard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten Ingard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'll be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him. Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please! The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. See through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that one of those pe once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. <laughs> oh, here we go. Very well. The trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. DeKiller. I have his cell phone or s cell phone number now, Your Honor. Uh, we can call him anytime. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About... All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about, usually done? But, what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please. Please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? About my client, part two. Here we go. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene, Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. This is a most unexpected turn of events for the, uh, fifth time now. <laughs> yes, it is, Your Honor. This seems to happen a lot in your court. However, this time, everything has finally been revealed until the next tidbit of information is revealed. And then I think I can say with confidence that it's been finally revealed until another piece of vital evidence shows up in the case. Then, with conclusive, in conclusion, the, the truth has finally been revealed until the surprise witness that's been hiding under my desk comes out. And then we commune with the spirits of the dead one final time. Because they have something to say. There's always something more. It never ends.
Everything has finally been revealed. <laughs> Just a second, Your Honor. <laughs> like, the game, in a nutshell, is those two scenes, side by side. The truth has finally been revealed! Just a minute. <laughs> yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. Huh? Why? What, th what this witness has said is none but beneficial to the defense's case. You scrutinize the testimony, then. Then I'll expose the lies in the oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. <laughs> ah, that makes two of us. Man, if I knew where this is my tax- where my tax dollars were going. <laughs> oh, God. It just keeps going. Okay, Adrian Andrews is my client. Question. What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, you might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. I'm witness, about requesting a hit. Yes? How much is your fee? <laughs> I'm so sick of this judge, Mr. The Killer. I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, we can do so after the trial. Uh, no, no, I'm not thinking of Mr. Wright! Yes? You! You want to kill me! You want me dead! Don't you? I mean... I'm not supposed to lie under oath. <laughs> um... I would like to decline answering that question, Your Honor. I can think of- Guilty, Mr. Phoenix Wright! You were hereby declared guilty! <laughs> Witness, let's continue. <laughs> Why did you disclose the name of your client? They're your client, are they not? Okay, tamper with the scene of the crime. I would think that most people would be able- wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I- be very effective at my job. Ah, yeah. Well, a change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. DeKiller. Does it? You're, like, you're following their orders and being paid to provide a service of murder. Don't. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought they could run away from their guilt. Okay, we gotta press everything. He's talking about the button on the knife. Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. I try to make things easy! My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. Pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything, to go and stab the deceased with a knife, and to even hide my card from sight, that is something I cannot overlook. Really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. You say most clients wouldn't do such a thing. That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi, too. Ah, uh, no, I already told you. I have no intention of using your services, ever. But Mr. The Killer, I, RT Game Daniel, have need. Um, let's talk. My business email, 
Here it is. Uh, <laughs> Why does it keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? <laughs> Mo the clown. Uh, Mr. DeKiller, can, do you offer like uh, like a special if I request multiple targets at once? It's not just the judge I need to kill. Do you have any specials? Like it is Christmas. Throwing any extras for me? Does it count if I strangle a puppet as well? Like that's not even a real person. Come on, that's like a, that's like a half see a person. So I'll pay you for the two, but then you kill Trillo as well. Just put him in a wood chipper. <laughs> the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All my cl all my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. I knew from the beginning. Even more problems the creation of planting up a knife and button. Why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around the scene of the crime is pretty risky. Why would someone who has requested a murder go to the crime scene anyway? That is true! I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Engard. If that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill. That is all. And to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty. Even if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. Okay, this is the final press. Here are some bits to, to fund the assassination. Thank you very much, Mr. Disco. Appreciate it. They'll be used. That's all you have to testify. Yes, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? Then you plan to continue? I must, as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life, Mr. Attorney? Excuse me. Ah, uh, no, no, I'm fine, really. Are you really now? You're kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All I can do now is expose the lies. That's true, however, you realize that you'll be very bad for our client, right? So confused. The one thing I know for sure is I can't let this trial end yet. Okay, so this is the point of suspicion that even Edgework kind of raised an eyebrow at. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that uh, Juan Corrida was dead. How can we show that's not the case? They were setting up something to confess. No. Because that evidence doesn't hold up anymore now. Objection! Well, the glass. Yep, she brought in the glass. Although, I can still see a logic where, well, she was just savoring the killing, but... Okay. It is the glass. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea that Juan Carita had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass! Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Carita had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edward, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? Isn't it a waste of time to 
ask about such a minor detail. It's not a very important de point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client, as you claim, then your client should have knowledge of Mr. Korea's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How oh, strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Mr. Edward, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. <laughs> objection! You can't say that. Oh, gee. You're right, Phoenix. Anyway, I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. Prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. We're acting now. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. Request taken. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I have made no mistakes. But you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. It means one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Okay. Came about a week ago. We have to keep pressing. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations. I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. Specific date and time. Can we get the date and time? Did you ask why on that specific night? No. I try to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Press it further. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there would be a bear-shaped figurine in Client Karita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside the figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planned to publicly disclose his contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. Let's see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Uh, it sure was, Your Honor, but I don't know why. Hi, right, Cross, thanks for 695 bits. Thank you very much. Very important. Testimony just now has made one thing clear. And that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Oh, really? Witness, please continue your testimony. Oh, well, we weren't penalized. We met at the bar. But you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as per... as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. The only way to establish that is to 
speak with the declined while looking them in the eye. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? I can press everything. Of course it was. Very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, it's unlikely he is mistaken. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, uh, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. I'm so lost, who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. So your client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says the two of them met. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. But it doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw a suspicion. To do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. So, I gotta double press it again, is it? One week ago. A specific date and time. What is the specific date and time? Okay, let that one go this time. I pressed this one before, just try let it go. Can we believe that your testimony up to this point has been reliable? Adrian Andrews. Do I have any evidence? the press conference. I mean, why would you bother stage in a press conference after the show, maybe? Nope. credit card receipt. Uh, I don't know where to even start on this one. A real quick help me out chat. I'm done pressing, yeah? I'm not. No. Well, it must be something to do with the other... We had some points where we could press further. Press further. Here it was for the bear. Let's retrieve the bear puzzle. Suicide note was inside. Um, claim that everything is important. We established that point. Press this further. 
Never taken requests by mail. I can press that one again. Physically met them. Not important. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. What? What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Right Eye did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. Hello. No, they haven't. That's when I thought I can trust this person as a client. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright was a testimony just now of any importance. This was important. I heard what I think I heard just now. Then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now is of the utmost importance. Oh, really? If that's the case. Witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. Like, I saw him, I thought I could trust this person as a client. They're all, they only know Adrian's name. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at the bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry. That is an impossible tale. What? Shelly the Killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip-up. About her. So, what is the issue? What did you say just now? About her. If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. <laughs> the phone broke. Oh no, we've lost contact with the killer. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following, that he always meets face to face with his clients when taking the request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, your honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. The radio is sweating. <laughs> oh God. Why did you find his receiver, Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous name. Oh, yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What is going on? Shelly, the killer! This court demands an explanation! Um... I think somehow I... must have mixed up this client with... another. So does that, that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would, allow me to... testify once more. I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth, and nothing but the truth! Go. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been many times, there have been times when I 
took a job without having met my clients. The request was for the murder of Juan Carita and two or three other small things. When I saw the names at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So he's just going off the names. But you took this job through a letter! He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. He quite clearly stated he does not do letters. That means he is definitely lying. Careful, Phoenix. Break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know I can't make him suspicious, but... I think we're okay, like we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now, let's begin the cross-examination! Okay. Uh, I took the request by mail. You just said you didn't. But didn't you just say that you always meet your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is simply not possible. But didn't you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come on now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. Mr. Wright, you can't badger a witness with such harsh words! You're a lawyer, so behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now, do you have any proof that Mr. DeKiller met with his client? Um. The problem is, like, do I. Is there something I present? I have this proof that Mr. DeKiller met with his client. Ms. Andrews was carrying it, but like, is that good? I, mean, I guess I do have proof in that sense, but that's for Adrian. <laughs> Let's try it. Come this far, I have to try proof something here. Very well, I will show you proof. Are you sure about this, Phoenix? Here is the proof that the witness met with his client, who wished Mr. Karita dead. No, because that will prove that Miss Andrews did it. Right. Uh. Would it be the bear? Or is this specifically that I met before? Who be the bear? So what do you think? <laughs> Let's not present anything just yet. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. Oh, I see! Then your line of question was just another waste of time. At least for us, Your Honor, that's the nature of rights, uh, right, right and wrong. <laughs> okay, let's see the other things. Two or three other things. Yes. And what were these other things? A few of the other things that have nothing to do with this case. I do. It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder if that is what is pushing you to continue this cross examination. Could it be that. You are planning to betray your own client. That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Wait. Oh, this is looking bad. Shouldn't press my luck. Oh, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Let's go. 
witness is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. Bear figurine. After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Karita's suitcase. And then, what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. Gave it to your client. Interesting. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just stated in your testimony. As you wish. Find the bear figurine and to give it to Adrian Andrews. Alright. Still in it. I found this figurine at Mr. Engard's mansion. If you gave it to Miss Andrews, then what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Engard, I'm sure. That makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems with this piece of testimony? Contradiction. The killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. Well, I know somewhere in that statement there is a contradiction. Yet, yeah. you know what, if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection on his end. You want to make a strong point, Phoenix. You have to present strong evidence. God, this is hard, because, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to present sometimes. I don't know. Alright, we're gonna pursue it. Witness, let's go over this one more time. You gave Miss Andrews the bear figurine, and she told you to take the bear and wait for it at Engard Mansion. Is that correct? Yes. Where are you going with this? Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. What? Balowitz, I don't think it's possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. How could she have not received it? Cameras? Am I presenting too soon here? I don't know. I mean, she would have been detained at this point, is what I'm thinking. And the crime was found out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Um... Okay, help me out chat, am I able to do this one right now? Or do I need- am I missing a piece of evidence? Yes, I am, okay. Thank you. Alright, so let's go through the evidence. Badge, no. Nickel Samurai. No. Press conference. No. The radio transceiver. No. 
Camera, no. Article, no. Guide map, probably not. Guide map has never once come into play. Tower case? No. Tomato juice? Murder? Suitcase open in that picture? No. Jam and ninja's button? Attempted suicide report. The autopsy. Knife. Photo. Uh, a picture card. Place the victim at the time of the murder. At the t at the time, Miss Andrews was carrying it. Does that absolve her of it because she didn't know what the card was? That's the only thing I can think of. We saved it. No. Save it here. We're going in for it. Is it the bear itself? Somehow. Apparently. Alright, let's see where this goes. Shelly the killer. If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews. Then this item should not have been inside it. This item. I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Please do, Judge. Just retire. You know, you've had a good run. So get up in the sun a while. No one's gonna miss you. Your Honor. Please think back to what to Miss Andrew's testimony. He's going to burn it for her sake. Even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrew's hands. I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. True. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Order! Order! So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. The radio broke again. Order! Order! Uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated one something to me. You... You must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your only intention, there's only one thing for me to do. Wait, please. Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. Stay on the line. No, please. Not that. Please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Nah. <laughs> what in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edward? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. You think there is a need to hear more testimony? Was this enough? Well, we should. Edward, we can't do this. We keep this up. Maya, she'll... Oh. Prosecution, I... What has come over everyone? Even you are! The prosecution... Rests. What is going on around here? 
The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is the most unusual situation. The prosecution rests with no further questions. Then, the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then, even though I'm reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelly DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews! Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Man and Guard, will be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Miss Andrews will be charged with murder. The prosecution has no further questions, so we now hear the defense's final remarks. Balif, please bring the defendant, Matt and Guard, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. Can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as truly innocent as a truly innocent good person. You've done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Ha. Wait, what? Why is he doing this? He's... You're in the clear, Matt! So I guess the old, even the old Fuddy Duddy figured me out. Mr. Ingard! What an atrocious lawyer I have. Giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crack. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? What? Why is he throwing away the case? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Side with justice, or should I save Maya's life? Oh, God. Better get and get a guilty sense, okay? But if I did that, Maya will die. If I say he's innocent, Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer. If I say he's guilty or not guilty, either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Madden Guard, is innocent. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. Can't. I can't do this, but I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt and Guard, is... Oh, God! Now, let me just check one thing. The reasons why we're afraid of making decisions, especially tough decisions, right, is because whenever we make a decision, the whole idea, the whole meaning of decision in Latin is to cut away from the past. Meaning, if I decide that I want to get married, I am cutting away from being single. If what about I decide murder? from having uh, a baby guilty and verdicts. becoming a parent, I'm cutting away from sleeping eight hours of sleep. Have you got anything if on I that? If I make a decision to become an entrepreneur, I'm cutting away from having a nine-to-five job, security. That's why we're afraid of making tough decisions. Today, we're going to talk about a formula on how you can start making some tough decisions. Okay. Got a formula. All right, let's see. So before I get into the episode about how to make tough decisions, if you haven't yet subscribed to the number one channel on YouTube. Oh, feck off. <laughs> Okay. All right.
He's guilty. We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Latin guard, your client deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt and Guard is. Objection! She's here! Francisca von Karma! What are you doing here? Oh! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scruffy fool. Did you just bring them? The final pieces? Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Avon Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. He just had a car accident. It's not that big a deal. All of the items are inside this. What a filthy old coat this is! That's Mr. Gumshoes. You can spot his tattered rags anyway. I apologize for its ugliness. But there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Your final evidence! This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. Uh-oh. Objection! Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence, down to the last. I request that Miss Von Cameron be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. I suppose you are right. God, I don't have much conviction in my decisions in this court, do I? I just flip flop from that one on a dime! However, this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. He must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around. A miracle. I'm sure of it. That's all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Oh god, so I have to decide what's relevant here. The gun does not matter because we've already confirmed that the killer is the killer. Matt would have no relation to the gun. I'm pretty sure there was no gun involved in this case. There's no real benefit to hearing about it. Please present the next piece of evidence. The second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from an unguard mansion. This one's important. There's a potential for recording. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh yeah. But I would uh, but I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to this hideout fort. The killer went back for it. That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injures three of the officers at the site. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the killer is no ordinary man. Contents unknown. Okay, the videotape. That's important. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Um, this was the disguise he was in when we met with him and when he performed the kill. How is it relevant to Matt, though?
Let's think, how is this one relevant to Matt? It might be. This one's a maybe. We can ask about it. There doesn't seem to be any consequence if we ask. Question for more details. Was that used during the crime? I am almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. There is one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There is a button missing on this uniform. A button. It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. One way to kill on the night of the murder, one of its special buttons is missing. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure, were we under normal circumstances? These items from Shelly the Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However... Our question is not who did the killing. It is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. I mean, the video... Your Honor, there, there's a lot of cameras. Uh, like, I don't... Do you not see that? Thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Carver. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. Why are we fighting this old man half the game? Half the battle is just him. <laughs> this court already has all the evidence it needs to hand out a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix, I knew it. No such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But no matter how you think about it, it's... Try, for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of this situation for us. Two. The first. Making guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If when guard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let the, his hostage go. That may be true, but... It's asking me to do the impossible. The second way. Force the killer to end his contract with Engar. If the killer were no longer to think of Engar as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first. You, if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, the judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he, he was just shown. He's not accepting them. Phoenix. Think things true from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side? Wait, does she mean? You mean to turn things around? Phoenix. The judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? Okay, right. So we're going to use this evidence. If we use the evidence to convict, basically, the killer, he will terminate the contract because his client is at risk. The alternative is... The evidence incriminates Matt somehow? I don't think it incriminates Matt. I don't think there's any clear way for it to do that. Maybe on the videotape. But if it incriminates the killer, and Matt doesn't back down, then the killer will be after him, I imagine. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what, like, logic, like, puzzle it is. The only reason I haven't saved is because some people are spamming it. Guys, please. The only reason I haven't done it is that. I will save it. If you stop. Thank you.
Cheers, guys. Appreciate it. I'm just trying to think and, like, work it out first. I'm trying to think, like, how do we make either of these two scenarios happen? Person who needs the evidence. The defense, prosecution, and the judge. I've seen all the pieces of evidence. And that is how we have come to know the truth. There is one person who has yet to see them all. That person does not know the truth. That truth. It may be what bring about, will bring about the miracle in the end. Thanks, guys. There are no objections to th this time, correct? Now and I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectively sit back and listen, kids? Objection! Here we go. I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I am not saying, saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then, you want to show the evidence to that person? Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. I know I've said this like 30 times already, but I mean it for real, sees this one. One chance. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible. To turn the situation around in one try. One try! That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix, think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking Ingar down at the same time. Now, Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time! Who would you like to show the evidence to? I see! And now, tell this court one piece of evidence you would like to show this person! Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> yeah, she was just shot. I'm afraid I cannot allow the defense to continue. <laughs> I can't reload it. That is enough, Mr. Wright. I will now state my verdict. This court finds a defendant, Matt and Guard. Oh no. That is all. This court is adjourned. Just like that, the case came to an end. I ran away from the courtroom and wandered the streets alone. Oh my god! <laughs> I never saw Maya again. The killer is a man of his word, so I'm sure he released her as promised. I heard the verdict of Miss Andrew's trial a few days later. She was found guilty, of course. The miracle never happened. Maybe it was never meant to be. Because a miracle is something that doesn't exist. The end. I got achievement unlocked, justice served. Uh oh. Let's not waste any more time! Who would you like to show the evidence to? I need Matt to want himself guilty. What piece of evidence do I use for it? The videotape. 
Let's see what's on it. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh oh. <laughs> Let me just, uh, forcibly relaunch the game real quick. Oopsie. Let's not waste any more time! Okay. Have to show the evidence. Um... What could do it? Pistol was found. I mean, the killer tried to recover this. So clearly this is of some importance. He went back for it. I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Olive, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right, looks like I managed to convince him. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. Thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. You know the contents of this tape? It's the blackmail on the killer! Yes. I was sternly told by my client to not watch it. But I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are on this tape. Me. There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. That's why you did it. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true? Mr. Wright? Who? Who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. That was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was that was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright. Why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Matt and why did Matt and Guard film the crime scene? The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There's only one reason why your client would secretly f film the crime scene. They didn't trust your skills. They just wanted to make sure the job was done. Blackmail. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep them at bay and even blackmail them if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? The 
radio is broken. It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. The cat plot hole has been patched? <laughs> I mean, it's still stupid, though, because they had communication. No, I, I think it still exists. Yeah, it's still there. Nah, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> I, th I think it's safe to say- I think we can conclude on one thing. I don't think it was the Mafia. <laughs> I don't think it's the Mafia. Drop the fucking cat, you're the guys who brought it up! <laughs> Wait. Yes, you see, Phoenix. It was I that left the note for you to go feed the cat. It was a forgery, because there can only be one killer among killers in this society. On karma! Ugh, <laughs> oh, I knew it. He's the one who organized the Mafia, too. I'm pretty sure. Yes, by a natural. That's the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them. To protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes? You told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if the traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then, that client would become my next target. For the honor of the, the killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. Edward, you psychopath. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job in my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item. But she's safe! Maya, I thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I'm sort of... I don't quite know what just happened there. With the client and the witness and... Ah! Miss Von Kramer, where did that... She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Oh gee, man, oh balls. <laughs> Mr. Engard, it looks like somehow you got what you wanted. Oh gee, oh god, oh, it's looking real rough right now. You will finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly. You should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Some, sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Oh, no, oh. No. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you'd understand what I mean if you watched this video. Oh, no, oh, oh. Oh, gee, help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Is this all right with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a very long battle. 
whether he's convicted or acquitted. There is no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. Wait, can I just say he's innocent? <laughs> right, Chief. But why is that even an option after all this time? You know, he's actually he hasn't done anything wrong, Your Honor. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Mattingard. Please make sure to savor every moment of what little time you have left. Your Honor, as always, the defense pleads not guilty. Very well. This court finds a defendant, Martin Guard. <laughs> oh god, wait, no, because if he's not guilty, he gets killed. Oh shit. Oh no, we've actually, um, we're actually sending him to die. <laughs> that has to be illegal. I'm, I'm complicit in murder then. Oh god, it took a moment to sink in there. I thought I was just gonna be able to decide if he goes free or not. <laughs> oh no. Oh gee, please wait. What's the matter? If, if I get a not guilty, I'll be killed. Bye. Um, um, no, no, I'm guilty. He's scratching off his face. Holy shit. Oh my god. As always, it looks like we've recovered the real truth. Well, yeah, I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Edward, how was Matt and Guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his inca incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip letter right about now. Very good. Oh, I'm glad he's being tortured, apparently. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? <laughs> yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. First time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. Must be talking about the time Edward really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for, for what he did. Witness, how should I put it? She has an illness. Wait, what? You're going to say you will choose death? That is of no concern to me. Wait, what? But after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I felt like I had finally been saved. Wow, this is the first time I've ever seen a smile. I'm really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I was I was just unsure where I was going for a moment or two, like... Edward should never become a therapist. Yeah, I don't think he'd be too good at it. And how are you feeling today? Well, you know, I've been in a better headspace. You're wrong! <laughs> I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. Like, fucking objection. <laughs> yeah, like... This. This is... This is the first time I felt comfortable with myself. With who I am. Shiro, thank you for the 10 gift subs. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Looks like we have resolved everything at last! As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that is good enough for me. But you know, I was just thinking, uh, in front of the court. Phoenix, when you went to Engard's house, how did you know there was evidence there? Uh, like after the transceiver call. Were you sent to the house previously to feed an animal, perhaps? I just can't quite piece it together. What was Grossberg doing at the boathouse? Oh, I've still been puzzling that one over a long while. That is all. This court is adjourned. <laughs> Manfred von Mafia gives a thousand bits. 
For you see, it was I who convinced you to maintain your perfect record and find Mashingard not guilty, only for him to be murdered by the Mafia shortly after. Oh no. You better watch your step the next time you're in an elevator, Mr. Mattingard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you were great out there, Phoenix. God, no, it doesn't- like, Von Karaman, no! If I don't say Von Karaman no after I do the Von Karaman voice, it feels like I've not closed, like, a Ouija board by saying goodbye at the end. I don't know if that, that's how the rest of you feel. Like, I feel like, like it's, it doesn't, there's no closure. If that's not said. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Shiro, thank you for another 20 gift subs. You're too kind. Thank you very much. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client up. You got him a guilty verdict this time. But... You have to look past all that, to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more more than just getting the not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Miss Von Kammer arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. Can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Side with justice, or should I save Maya's life? My client, Matt and Garrett, is. Is he guilty or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then. And your answer. Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. Right! Edgeworth! I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? You're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, she's quite safe. She's on her way, way here as we speak in a patrol car. Ah, Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya's safe! You did it, you really did it, Mr. Nick. Ow, she punches deceptively hard for a kid. I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. What? <laughs> Uh, um, uh, thanks. Oh, what's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um, about earlier. Uh, thanks. Ow. <laughs> Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You, you lost. Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy. I don't think you'll ever understand. Miss Von Karma. How dare you? Don't worry. She may be in, she may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Edgeworth. For my own personal victories. And for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book. And so my win record remained spotless. But... A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner taste at my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... <laughs> it was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. There was no one in the courthouse at the time. I showed up a few hours early for the trial. I was actually saved because the prosecution failed to arrive on the scene. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened. So I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. As well as you as well you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. Jesus my karma. But that was not that happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense! We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so... 
no matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people. That man would hold strong with his undying fate. The judge would shut him down almost instantly, because he seemed to be biased against them. Somehow, the trial still went in his favor. And then before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This I promise you. The truth? Yes. That's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, Reich? That's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went to Haydn, isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory and ran away into the night. Ah, is, is Mr. Edward right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When he disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you, you betrayed your own words. That's why one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgewood I knew I'd died. At least that's what I told myself. I actually thought you were dead for some reason and I didn't clarify on that detail for a very long time when people asked. Edward, your family might have sold all your stuff by now. You were gone a very long time. No one's seen you in years. But that's not my problem. You pathetic fool. Miss Von Karma. I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. A Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edward, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. Neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francisca threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the to precinct later. There's something else. Her whip! Ah, isn't that Miss Von Karen's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. You should keep this right. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird, Hedger. <laughs> Nick! M -m 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 Maya! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Family reunion. Apart from those faces that are either dead or in prison. Family reunion. Oh, Nick, I knew you would come through. You got and got convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. We sure press our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Probably actually quite physically weak at this point. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. That's quite comforting. That really is it really that easy to do so, that easy to do something like that. Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're alright. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. Hey. We're gonna end it by going for burgers, aren't we? <laughs> Alright. I think it's time we got out of this depressed place. Huh? Where are we going? McDonald's. <laughs> the end. Food, Nick. Food. Grub. Chow. I'm starved. I'm so hungry, even when you look like a nice... Even you look like a nice, juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. I think I look like a burger. I'm a prime rib, at least. Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please. Um, if you insist. Alright, so 
So how about we hit up our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I've decided that we have to make up, make it up by having another feast. Another feast. Come on, Nick. Food. Oh, we're going back to the hotel. Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Oh, God. Are you okay, Gumshoe? You were in a car accident. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole, of all things. A telephone pole? And it wasn't a red light that got him. Yeah, I did it again, city boy. I felt like my dear old heart was gonna give out on me. And I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Saburai. Thanks. Now look here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bullied Mr. Rock too hard? If you don't start being a lot nicer to him, he might just kick it. Tonight even. Um, I get, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone got around. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lada brought herself a new camera. Oh, she bought herself a new camera. Does she not get the other one back? I know it's taken as evidence for the trial. Is it not returned to her? That seems kind of shitty. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Jiro, thank you for another 10 gift subs. You're too generous. It's 40 gift subs now. That's a lot. Thank you very much. Come on. The night's all about eating. So let's go chat down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you were the only one, you were the one who saved the day, detective. Oh, me? You really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Ah, well, you know, it's... Ho, 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 ho. Oh, wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout... I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Uh, Tyshirt, thank you for the 10 gift subs as well. Queen Bovine, thank you for 5 gift subs as well. Thank you very much, guys. You're being way too generous with those right now. Thank you very much. What? Four? Official as well. Jesus Christ, guys. Thank you for another 10 gift subs. That's a lot of subs in a few minutes. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. It was a fourth item. Ah, come on, y'all. It's over. But ooh boy, I tell you, you really are something else. It's gonna take longer to get to the end of the game because people are being so generous right now. Uh, Scrub and Jet, thank you both for five gift subs. I gotta, like, stop and pause. Yeah, let's keep going. You're too kind. Thank you very much, guys. Been getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped. Never a dull moment, will ya, huh? Ah, you think? Why does she look so happy about that? Being shut away for two whole days. Weren't you scared? Yeah, it was real scary. I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had a rough gal. So where's this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mystic Maya's picture. Hmm, you know, I don't know where it went. Aw, oh, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah, sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Uh, Shiro and Chris, thank you for the 10 gift subs each. Thank you very much. Beep, beep. Hmm? What is it, Edward? This thing is picking something up. Oh, that's... That's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Oh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here. The tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh. Probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. 
I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? Mr. Edward, you haven't even eaten anything yet. You've eaten way too much, you glutton. Phoenix, she was starved for a few days. Have some fucking sympathy. Look at you dying of hunger over there. You glutton. Like, where are your table manners? You didn't even use the right kind of spoon for your soup. <laughs> My god. New, thank you for the five gift subs as well. Thank you to everyone who just gave subs and bits there. Yeah, there was a lot of them that just came in. Thank you very much, guys. I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say, thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. Hm. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. Is it time? <laughs> Is it? Edgeworth. This is my most valuable possession. And it proves I'm a lawyer. I don't think there's anything else I want to give him. Do you want a figurine? Do you want the whip? That's a weird keepsake. This one is important. <laughs> Snyder, thank you for another tech gift subs. Rin, thank you for a thousand bits. I'm sorry, guys. I can't help it. I can't help it. I need to know what it does. <laughs> What's this? Um. It's my way of saying thanks. I see. Well, it's a thought that counts. Hmm. I guess I'm not very good at this show my appreciation thing. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. <laughs> well, he's gone. I, could, I, I couldn't help it, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Looks like Mr. Edgewood has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Maya! Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly? Did you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Well, but anyway, the who's paid for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say thank you to Nick. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm kind of at the point where I can't even buy in some noodles, pal. Well, I kind of already put your name on the bill. Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It'd better be... It'd better be... It'd better be anyhow for $3,000. Huh? Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab at all. Huh? Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Ah, oh, you don't need to hold it back now, year. Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. This is gonna be the first time I hear the real you. Ah! <laughs> Game's over. <laughs> Go on, it's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. Alright then. If you say so. Objection! And we're done. But what was going on with the transceiver then? Did we see that? You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped that three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. That's it's not something you should be proud of, Maya. I'm 
I'm so happy that I could, that you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you just in case. You're eight years old. How did you do that? What? Well, pal, looks like I'm back in the force again. Mr. Edgeware had a long talk with the chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, letting that all go is bad for all of society. I knew it. Crashing headlong to everything is the only way I li to live, pal. Gumshoe got his job back. I'm happy for him. Oh, what was your... <laughs> I, Maggie Bird, I'm retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come to buy the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Oh, fuck, this means the big top characters are back. No. No, please, God, no. Yeah, yes, uh, are you here to see a patient? I'm Director Hoti. Oh, recently, mm, yes, that girl you knew, I haven't seen her around, mm, yes, but I remember, if I even so much laid an eye on her, it would go crack. Didn't matter if I got whipped, though, mm, mm, yes, oh, oh. He probably should have had the magical John voice from the start, I think it's more appropriate. Oh. It's time to begin our quest! A world circus domination to get sweetie. And to let the world know we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Moe's jokes. Me and you both. I'm ready! I'm ready! There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears! I'm gonna be more contemporary with my humor! Mo Curls, rep rep represent! I've got a new act all worked out! If you could prepare for the Hallelujah Chorus! Say something, will ya? You're supposed to start this off! Get on with it! I hope you both die. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I hate them. I hate the circus characters. <laughs> I don't. I don't like What's this? Grad, it's just an ordinary electric razor. I can't believe this. Really, how long do they plan on making me do this? Ah, but it's old Edgy Pooh's idea. That means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But, why do I get the feeling? They wouldn't forget about me, would they? Ah, it was never like this in the old days. Everyone taught the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me like royalty and mad oh, all oh, oh, just fuck it all. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. Said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. Get to see everyone off. The killer gets... It has become difficult for me to... in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you'd like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. And we both be blessed with longevity. Why does the killer, like, get a sign- get the sign off? You made a website? March 23rd, 9.42 p.m. International Departures Gate 12. Where are you going, Francisca? How did you know I was here? With this, 
That's... I hear you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy, drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash. I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things. It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. Put it in here. Doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Franziska. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure. Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that. But... But me, I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I... I have to be one. I have to. You may not be a genius like your father, but... You are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Uh, I think it's too late to reload the game. Uh... <laughs> you were supposed to give me the whip. You haven't changed a bit. You have always... You've always left me alone and walked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth. I've always hated you. And then... Finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man. If I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat. And this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics. Isn't that right? Hmm. <laughs> Today, you chased after me. After I had left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But I have no intention of stopping. If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francisca von Karma. I... I... I am Francisca von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you better prepare yourself. Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Phoenix Wright. One day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you. I'll take good care of this fort piece. So I can give it to you when at last we meet again. Yes, for you see, Phoenix. It was I. Oh, that's actually sweet. Okay. Never mind. I retract my previous statement, Phoenix. Achievement unlocked. Farewell, my turnabout.
Phoenix Wright, justice for all. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you to everyone who gave bits. Thank you to everyone who subbed. Thank you to the mods on hand, as ever. I hope you all enjoyed the stream. Ah, oh, God. It's done! That was a hell of a final case. That probably was the best one there. Plot hole aside. Um, I really enjoyed that. That was, that was really good. And we got the best possible ending. And we didn't mess up anything. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's Phoenix Wright Justice for All. I'm, I'm not streaming tomorrow. I'm taking a day off. We've done some long streams lately. We've done some long charity streams, too. Uh, I need to catch up a bit on rest. Um, try get highlights of this up in the near future. Uh, in regards to the third game of the trilogy, I am taking a break. I am not diving into it straight away. Uh, I'll do it when I feel ready for it, down the road. I have plans to play the third game at some point. Um, I don't really have plans to play any of the other games, I'll be honest with folks. I I, I don't want to think that far ahead, because I, I, I know some people, right? So, and I see this in the Discord and that, like, people are saying, like, I can't wait till he plays Apollo Justice. I don't know if I'm ever going to play that. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, what I want to do is the trilogy in that, because what, from what I understand, all the characters change. I don't know if I'm interested in the other games. Just genuinely. Um, so, I'm j the reason I'm just saying that is just because I know some people are excited about these streams, just to try and manage expectations a bit. I want to do the third game. I'm not signed on for anything else, though. And I'm just making that clear. Okay? I feel that's important. But yeah, I'm taking a long break, though. Could be a few months before we visit Phoenix Wright. I don't know when I'm going to play it again. It'll be down the road. It's not going to be next week or anything, I can tell you that much. But it's been good. It's been really good. Uh, worst case in the game, big top. Best case was that last one, by far. Uh, I love like the logic and the mind games you have to play, because like you have to present evidence, but you also like have reason to not present it on certain bits, so yeah, it, it gets in your head a lot, and I really like that. Favorite character? Um, I mean, I do like Edward a lot, but I mean, I mean, I do also have to rep the Von Karamas. They're good fun. I love the Von Karamas. The fact that like Von Karamas' daughter is in this game was just like wild to me. Like the bloodline must continue. Uh, we're just sitting tight for a moment. Uh, there's a new video up on the YouTube channel too if you want something more to watch from me. Uh, it's the Pokemon highlights from earlier this week. I'm gonna see who's streaming. Shiro, thank you for another 10 gift subs right at the end. Thank you very much. Um... I'm trying to see. Yes, okay, so Thankmas is going, and I'm trying to work out who's actually streaming for Thankmas. Uh, the only person I can see right now, at least uh, like, that I follow, is Strippin'. So, Strippin' wins out here, he's playing some League of Legends. Go say hey to the man. He's fundraising for Thankmas, he's fighting homelessness. Send some love to the man. I'll be making a donation on your guys' behalf for Thankmas. We raised a lot for charity this past week that I, I, I don't want to start another campaign just on the back of what we just did there. I feel like that would be asking too much. Um, 
hope that's understandable there. Uh, but go say hey to Strippin. Stream tell us games and goodwill. Uh, I'm gonna rest. I'm taking a night off. I'm just gonna chill. I need to sleep proper. Like, the Game Awards have ruined my sleep schedule. I think it's just been a busy week, too. I've been, like, pulling late nights. <laughs> to try, like, get the videos out in time and make sure I have enough time to stream. So, now is a bit of wind down. Because I think as well, like, just something, something to mention, like, um... Actually, no, I don't need to mention that, that's fine. No, we're good. I think this, I, I think this might be one of the last, like, kind of marathon streams we do this year. In terms of games, like, uh, where it's like, it's like six, eight hour streams. Um... I can't think of anything coming up. That's the same. Oh, the raid's going away. Oh, hang on. Okay. See you later, guys. Thanks for coming tonight. All the best. It's happening. That was too slow. Okay. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming.